BYU, number 16 in the nation. A high-powered air attack led by quarterback Max Hall, wide receiver Austin Collin, and tight end Dennis Pitta. These Cougars are looking to win out and capture a third straight conference title. Air Force, winners of five straight. An option-filled ground attack led by freshman sensation Tim Jefferson, his classmate Asher Clark, and fullback Todd Newell. These Falcons are flying high as the home stretch approaches. It's a Mountain West Conference showdown in the Rockies next. It's a crisp, clear Saturday afternoon and perfect for college football in Colorado Springs as 16th ranked BYU comes to town to take on the Air Force Falcons. It's not only senior day for 18 football players, but also for nearly a thousand other classmates. The final football game, the final march on, and the final rush into the stands for the cadets. And here are the Air Force seniors who look to finish their career in fantastic fashion with an opportunity today against one of the top teams in the nation, those pass-happy BYU Cougars. And welcome, everybody. Alongside my partner, Trev Alberts, I am Tom Hart. The Mountain West Conference has experienced unprecedented success this season. Three teams in the top 25, another Air Force right on the cusp of being ranked. And these two teams, big part of that. Now, Air Force has gotten to it a little bit differently with the young team, but BYU, once again, features that veteran, solid passing attack, and they're fun to watch. In the quest for perfection, Bronco Mendenhall has a veteran team, a veteran offensive line, veteran skill players, and you know what? They're led by one of the best quarterbacks in college football in Max Hall. is a young man who's been around a long time. He's had a touchdown pass, Tommy, in every single game this year, with the exception of the TCU game. Six of the ten games they've played, he's had three touchdowns or more. 71 percent completion percentage for Max Hall. He's been outstanding, and you know what? They've got some weapons on the outside. Austin Colley's done an outstanding job. He's the deep threat. He's the vertical threat for this offense. Well over a thousand yards receiving. He's a young man that brings a little swagger to this offense. The guys had eight consecutive 100-yard receiving days, but here's the difficult matchup this afternoon for Air Force. It's Dennis Pitta at tight end, an outstanding player in the middle of the field. Chris Thomas, the safety for Air Force, will have to do a good job. Those lines linebackers of Air Force, can they withstand this aerial assault of the veteran BYU offense? And you know, not much was expected out of Air Force this season. It was supposed to be a rebuilding year. Well, after back-to-back -back losses to Utah and Navy, Air Force went to a youth movement. They put in freshman quarterback Tim Jefferson. They went to the triple option. They haven't lost since. Uh, Tim Jefferson's really been the difference. Also, Todd Newell at fullback, but they just established the running game 275 yards on the ground they average. And really, Tim Jefferson's been the reason. He's in a great job, calm demeanor, but he brings a presence to the outside. He gets to the perimeter, does a great job of attacking defenses. Of course, Asher Clark, one of the better running backs as well. He's a true freshman. He's made a difference. Two carries of over 40 yards last week against Colorado State. That's important, but really, Tommy, I think one of the most important things in this game against BYU is the passing game. Last week, Tim Jefferson, 6 of 8, 171 yards and two touchdowns. Can Air Force throw the football against this BYU defense? And moments ago, one of the great traditions at all of the academies. This one, another window rattler. Three F-15Cs from Nellis Air Force Base. About drowned out my partner. And look at that. What's that, seven, eight Gs pulling straight up in the north end zone? Let's take a look at our Liberty Mutual coaching matchup. Two coaches at no success. And, Trev, you might not find better fits for their respective institutions than Bronco Mendenhall at BYU and Troy Calhoun back at his alma mater. Uh, Tommy, I think you're absolutely right. Troy Calhoun's just done such an outstanding job. And you mentioned it earlier. Of course, nine wins last year. And as a veteran team, not a lot of people thought much of Air Force this year. But I think the coaching job that Troy Calhoun's done this year has really been remarkable. And on the other side, Bronco Mendenhall just consistently performing at a high level. Won the Mountain West two years in a row and a great opportunity again once. If things fall right for them this year, of course, after this game, they go on the road to play Utah, BYU with an outstanding season themselves. BYU won the toss. They want the football. 
Right, uh, Ryan Harrison puts it in the air and into the end zone. Austin Colley won't have a chance for a return. Let's meet the starters on offense for BYU. And as typical, a big, strong offensive line, especially right tackle David Oswald. 6'8", 330. And the Reynolds brothers join him up front. And the backs and receivers include big Harvey Unga, 6'239", pounds. But the man who makes it go is junior quarterback Max Hall. Eighth in the nation in passing yards at 307 yards a game. First down, BYU from the 20. Hall surveys the field and takes his time. To throw on first, and a pass caught. Big tight end Dennis Pitta has a first down. That one goes for 16 yards. Here are the starters defensively now for Air Force. 3-4 defense. Jake Paulson, the senior at the end, will have an opportunity to get the haul today. Ken Lamondola has been fantastic the last few games at linebacker. And Reggie Rembert, just a sophomore, a young cornerback for Air Force, is a first-year starter. And Chris Thomas, 10 tackles against Colorado State. Shifting up front for Air Force. And Hall to throw for the second time. Over the middle, again, a first down for BYU. Once again, he finds Pitta. They think they can take advantage of mismatches. Let's get Trev's progressive keys to the game. Well, for BYU's offense, it's status quo. We've already seen it here, Tommy. It's Max Hall. It's the offensive line protection. Get it to Dennis Pitta. And then on defense at Air Force, I think you have to wrap up the big backs. We haven't seen the run so far, but if there's one thing this Air Force defense historically has had trouble with, it's tackling big backs. Harvey Unga, of course, a 240 pound running back already 34 yards in the air for Hall both of them to Dennis Pitta who last year had five grabs for 114 yards against this Air Force defense first run of the day and four yards on first down for Fui Vakapuna Tommy, this is what we're talking about. There's Harvey Unga right there, six foot, 243 pounds. You see that Air Force defensive line. But make no mistake about it, Tim DeRuder, the defensive coordinator, done an outstanding job. They're only allowing 136 yards rushing a game. So a great matchup here this afternoon. Of course, the best offense in the Mountain West Conference versus the number three defense. Unga didn't play the second half last week against San Diego State finish with just 37 yards on the ground. He'll share time today with Vakapuna. Second and six. Hall to throw for the third time. Facing pressure. Gets it away. Short of the first down. And this time he finds Unga out of the backfield. Harvey Unga, as we talked to some of those BYU coaches, Tommy, you see there 85 yards a game, but a big man. The coaches talked about how he was gifted for such a big guy. Good feet, tight spaces, has six touchdowns. Also the third leading receiver on this offense. So Harvey Unga does an outstanding job of hurting you in a lot of ways defensively. Third and two now out of the eye. Iona Pritchard, reserve linebacker, is the fullback here. Hall to throw, gets pressure, and gets dropped at midfield. Ken Lamondola has been fantastic the last few weeks for Air Force, and that time they took a chance and they figured they have to. Lamondola is going to come on the blitz right here, number 47, trying to get some pressure. It's BYU in a running formation that time, and Lamondola just reads it really wasn't on a blitz, the late stunt that time. As Ken Lamondola, who the coaches have raved about at 91 tackles coming into this game. And that's a great stop and a good job on third down of getting off the field for this Air Force defense. 27 sack of the season for Air Force. Top 10 in the nation with those stats. Not a very good punt off the foot of San Diego, but it will carry down to the 15 where Reggie Rembert has and is granted the fair catch. So the Air Force defense stalls BYU, and it's Kenny Lamandola who turns it around in the first possession. College football on CBS College Sports is brought to you by GEICO, where 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Bud Light. Endless refreshment from start to finish. Bud Light keeps it coming. And by the Home Depot, you can do it, we can help.
We had a nice snowstorm through the area yesterday morning. It is, uh, for the most part, all melted away. And Air Force trying to melt away this BYU defense, which is a little bit banged up. We'll tell you about some of the guys that will not dress today for BYU in a moment. First down for the Falcons and freshman quarterback Tim Jefferson. Here's the option for Jefferson. Keeps it in his hands and gets wrapped up by Jan Jorgensen. Let's meet the starters up front for Air Force. A couple of seniors on senior day, including Keith Williams at left tackle and center Andrew Pipes. And in the uh, backfield, of course, keep an eye on Todd Newell, the senior from San Diego, has turned things around and become a more integral part of this Air Force offense. He'll share time back there with Jared Two today. He had a great second half last week. Newell is a fullback here, and Jefferson under center on second and eight. Asher Clark in motion. First carry for Newell. Finds perhaps a yard against the heart of the BYU defense. Freshman quarterback Tim Jefferson came to the academy from prep school and didn't waste any time making headway and learning the playbook, and so took over for senior Shea Smith. He is 5-0 and as a starter. He's the fourth freshman starting quarterback in school history, the last was a fantastic quarterback that just wrapped up his career last year, Sean Carney. It does not happen very often that Air Force not only uses freshmen, but in such important pieces. On third down, the option. Here's Clark. Tries to cut it back up. Finds nowhere to go. And a fired-up BYU defense stops him. That was Colby Clawson in. Along with Matt Ayu. They go four wide receiver set this time, trying to spread out that BYU defense. And a nice job, as you mentioned, Tommy, of getting down the line. Colby Clawson and Matt Ayu. This linebacker crew for the Cougars is beat up. A lot of guys filling in. Colby Clawson, who really wasn't the start at the start of the season. Vic Soto, he's out. Good play by the linebackers that time. Here's Reed White. Takes the punt, takes it up to the 44-yard line. Good field position once again for BYU. They couldn't take advantage last time. Can they do it this time? Back to Colorado Springs in a moment. Bronco Mendenhall's quest for perfection continues. It won't end in an undefeated record, but still plenty to play for. The BYU season boils down to one week. They get Air Force today. Of course, Utah in a rivalry game to close the year. Three of those teams in the Mount West standings are ranked. Air Force is just on the outside looking in. A fantastic season overall for the top four in the Mount West. And still, all four of those teams have a shot at a conference title. From top to bottom, this is the best year that the Mountain West has ever had. Wyoming, Wyoming of course, at the bottom of that list, just went to Knoxville and beat the Volunteers. On the ground, first carry for Harvey Unga. He's got room, and he takes it inside the 40. A first down scamper for the second time on first down. BYU gets a play of 15 plus yards. Justin Moore and Reggie Rempert on the stop. It's up front for that offensive line. Just in a two point stance that time. Just walling it off there. A good job by David Oswald and Travis Bright. Look at them wall out. Big number 74, Travis Bright, the right guard. Good job of walling off that Air Force defense. Back at it on the perimeter. Air Force trying to make something happen with a change of direction. And they'll find three yards on the play. It was Aaron Kirkhoff who had to stop a Michael Reed. Just a good recognition by Max Hall that time. Realizes he's got man-to-man -man on the outside a little late. So just throws it out to Michael Reed. You'll see the Air Force defender get there late. Michael Reed has it. Tries to cut back. That's just a good job by Air Force's defense and Kirkhoff of staying at home and making a nice open field play. Remember Michael Reed used to wear that 7-11 t-shirt? Told his quarterback Max Hall last year, I'm always open. Always find me. Tough to find him when you got a weapon like Austin Collie who hasn't been thrown to yet. On second down, Hall finds Collie. Here's Austin Collie working in the middle of the field. A BYU first down. Lamandola with the tackle. That's a great route that time from Austin Collie. Air Force comes with a blitz that time, bringing five, trying to get some pressure on Max Hall, not allowing him to get comfortable. But Austin Collie comes back to the football. Now watch him here as Max Hall sits back in the pocket. Good protection. Nine comes back to the football in front of the defenders. Just a good route by Austin Collie and a first down for BYU. Collie just happy to have a grab. Last year held without a catch against Air Force. That snapped a 14-game streak of games with a reception for Collie. 
On first down, Hall fires a bullet to Pitta, and Pitta takes it to the 10-yard line. Four years ago, Dennis Pitta was a freshman at BYU, played his first game against Air Force, scored two touchdowns, the first two of his career, and blocked a punt that led to a touchdown. And Tommy, that time Hunter Altman's going to come with a little bit of pressure from the outside, so you're going to get man-to-man there in the slot. There's Dennis Pitta. There's the matchup that's so difficult. Chris Thomas with a nice tackle, but when you have a guy like Dennis Pitta with his size and his hands in space, you either have a linebacker or safety trying to cover him, and of course that's a very difficult matchup. Here's the eye formation again for BYU. Two tights. They'll run it out of this formation this time, and Tui Bakapuna cuts it inside the five. On his feet, and in the end zone. Touchdown, BYU. We talked about those big backs, Tommy, and how difficult they are to bring down, but you're going to see a block on the outside. Number three, Michael Reed, right there. Good job at the point. And then look at the power, just fighting into the end zone. Running over Hunter Altman, the outside linebacker. That's an impressive drive for BYU's offense. Sophomore Mitch Payne with the extra point. An Air Force sack stoned BYU's first drive. Unstoppable on the second as Rui Bakapuna splashes in from 11 yards out. And the Cougars are on the board at the Air Force Academy. Seven nothing, 16th ranked BYU leading Air Force. And now let's take a look at the Bud Light stat six pack. 17 wins. Between Air Force and BYU, a BYU team that hadn't lost a conference game in two years, favored to win it again this season, but got tripped up on a Thursday night in Fort Worth. Still a conference title to play for, and it still could be shared. If you have a three-way tie, all of a sudden you get the Las Vegas Bowl fighting over uh, who may be coming to town, and it's been BYU the last few years. Justin Sorensen, a freshman from South Jordan, Utah, will kick off. Sam Brzezica, one of the returners for Air Force. Sorensen's got a strong leg, but this one high and short. Reggie Rembert from the 11. Rembert lit up at the 20-yard line. Reggie Rembert is good at changing directions, but that time he went from going forward to going backwards. Michael Aliso with the hit. There's a flag on the field, Tommy. Go back to the touchdown. We've talked a lot about Dennis Pitta, his ability to catch the pass. You want to be a complete player, you better be able to block as well, sealing off that left side. A good job of just pushing it down. Look, Fui Bakabuda. Nobody team. in the way until he gets down Five to the goal line. Penalty. Not only can Dennis Pitta catch the ball with three big catches already here, but a nice block as well. BYU was offsides on that kickoff, as you may have heard, and so Bronco Mendenhall's team, one of the most penalized teams in the nation, will be backed up, and the Air Force will have them kick it again. And so Sorensen, a highly touted recruit out of Bingham High School, will try it one more time. This guy was banging 60 yarders in Utah prep play last year, and I've never seen a fan base get more excited about a kicker coming to uh, the program as the Cougar faithful were when Sorensen decided this would be his stop. Well, the only thing I can remember is Sebastian Janikowski at Florida State. The Seminole fans are pretty excited about the Polish rifle. Here's Rembert. And the kick goes out of bounds. So back-to-back -back flags on BYU special teamers and Air Force will get fantastic field position. And this one went out of bounds at the one-yard line. So Sorensen ruling on the field that the ball contacted the receiver. Mm, then the ball went out of bounds. BYU's ball at the two-yard line. Well, there you go. So pick the flag up. He said BYU's ball. Obviously, he meant Air Force ball as it uh, went off of Rembert, apparently. I didn't see it from here, but that's the case. The pain and the Sorensen, the BYU kicker, is trying to figure it out. Take a look at Reggie Rembert. Keep an eye on his sneakers, on his foot. Went right off of his right foot. Right there, Tommy. That's a mental right mistake right for foot. Rembert. You just got to get out of the way. So good call. And first and ten from the two. And I think they're going to take another look at this one. The previous play is under review. Yeah. 
so Air Force will have a lot of field to work with starting at the two. Let's flash back to 1982, another long Air Force drive. September 25th in the opening of the new stadium in Pro Bowl with under seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Steve Young took it in from six yards out. BYU led by seven. Air Force started their final drive at the one-yard line. And here's Mike Brown scampering for 28 yards. Later in that same drive, quarterback Marty Luther hits Brown for a 22-yard touchdown with six seconds left. The Falcons go for two, and they win it at BYU 39-38. That was a 99-yard game-winning drive. And this would be a 98-yard drive because Rembert, as you see the ball change direction, go off of his shin and his ankle and out of bounds. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. You want the right calls because this is a big game for both of these programs. And let's show you the starters for BYU up front. Jan Jorgensen, the Mountain West Conference leader in career sacks. And Matt Ayu will step in for Sean Dolman, who went underwent surgery on his appendix yesterday. Andrew Rich has uh, stepped in, and we'll see Brandon Bradley today getting some time at corner. They want to be more physical, even though Rich had been playing well the last few games. They want their big tackling corners in. In the shadow of the goalpost. Newell has room on the outside and takes it up for a nine yard gain on first down. Let's get Trev's progressive keys to the game. And for Air Force offensively, it stretched the field, and ordinarily you might think about throwing the ball, but for Air Force, I think it's big plays. Last week they had five of 25 yards or more. Of course, defensively, BYU, it's discipline and execution. That's what it's all about. You have to know your assignment, and you have to perform it against this Air Force offense. And, of course, for Air Force as well, getting Todd Newell and the fullback position involved in this offense puts a lot of pressure on that BYU defense. That was a 10-yard gain, the first first down of the day for Air Force. So they go back to the fullback and four and a half yards on first down. I want to go back to that flashback that you showed in 1982. One of the things I think that stood out immediately when this offense is really successful, of course you run the option, but it's the play action pass. It's the ability to get that man coverage on the outside and can Air Force complete some passes with Tim Jefferson this afternoon. That'll be very important if they're able to beat BYU. Troy Calhoun told us yesterday to win this game, the scoring has to be in the 20s. It's going to be a 27 team final up the middle room to run and Todd Newell had open field in front of him before he got out over his feet a first down rush again for Air Force and a team Trev that only used their fullback four times in the first half against Colorado State they've established it today quick to the mesh that time a great block by number 63 Andrew Pipes as he gets up into the middle linebacker that time. Remember, all of those injuries at linebacker is Sean Doman not there. Matt Ayu stepping in. And now to throw on first down. Jefferson looking deep and complete. Trying to find Jacques Robinson. He's a freshman speedster that has been fantastic in practice the last couple of weeks, and they want to take chances with this guy. But see, that's okay. Obviously, the fans sitting here, it's double coverage. You want to make sure you don't turn the ball over, but you have to take some shots on this BYU defense. You cannot allow the safeties to get too close to the line of scrimmage. You want to keep them honest back there in the backfield. So now second and ten. The call comes from the Air Force sideline, where, among others, last year's starter Sean Carney is sending in the signals. Jefferson hands it off. Newell again, straight up the gut. You mentioned the injuries. Not only is Sean Dolman out, but also Daniel Sorensen. David Nixon's backup at strong side linebacker is out with an ankle injury. So a lot of uh, second teamers will see time, even third teamers, for BYU today. So important. Quick to the mesh, they call it. Fullback has to get to the line of scrimmage with quickness, and that time actually ran past a linebacker who didn't know the fullback had the ball. On third and three, this is the first carry of the day for sophomore Jared Two, the lone Falcon out of the Beehive State. Two is from Park City. Jan Jorgensen had the stop. I think it's interesting talking to BYU this week. They said, really, we spent the whole week in pads. We haven't yeah. been in pads since, you know, like back in training camp because of the importance of trying to stop this option offense. All right, fourth and one now for Air Force. Will they go back to the fullback? Jefferson barking the signals and they'll check it. Up 
On fourth and one, the play clock now at seven. And they got a jump, but I'm not sure which side it came from. The center, Andrew Pipes, flinched. But did he do it because BYU crossed the line? Offside. Defense. Penalty. First down. Wow, disappointing for Bronco Mendenhall and High, High May Hill, the defensive coordinator. It's right there. It's number 52. Russell, Russell Tia Lavea. Tia Lavea right over the ball. 97th in the NCAA. That's not where you want to be. And another flag today. That's their third against BYU. Two came on kickoffs, if you can believe that. Well, pardon me, the second one was taken off after the ball went off of Rembert. So... That gives Air Force a first down, and they go back to Newell. And that's where they're making their money today. Brett Denny had to stop for BYU. We talked to Jan Jorgensen this week, and he told us that, yeah, the defensive ends, both myself and Brett Denny, that's our responsibility. We have to hit the fullback every single time. So you see those defensive ends in that 3-4 defense crashing down. They're responsible. These guys right here on the end will be responsible for the fullback. This time it's a tailback, Asher Clark, who gains two yards before Kellen Fowler makes the stop for BYU. Fowler's family at the game today made the trip up from Utah. We're talking to Bronco Mendenhall, the head coach, and he said, you know, we're really only going to run one or two defenses because it doesn't really matter. Anything you do, Air Force has an answer to it, so do what you do and try to do what you do right. Third and five. The Air Force 0 for 2 on third downs today. The key to playing against the option is the ability to play fast as a defender. Know where you're going and get there quickly because of the speed and tempo with which the offense plays. Jefferson keeps it. First down Air Force. Not only is it a reinvented Air Force team in terms of personnel, but Trev also scheme in many ways. It really is. When you think about the fact that they did a lot of the zone blocking scheme earlier in the season, now back to that sort of option type of blocking up front where you're running the trap option triple option those sorts of things but we've seen already tommy the importance of that fullback you got todd newell going again a little bit and now all of a sudden such a focus on the fullback as tim jefferson gets to the corner and gets a first down well troy calhoun told us yesterday that they need to have sustained drives but also take chances did not start correctly there is no foul play is legal it's kind of a tough balance for troy calhoun Sustained drives, eat up the clock, keep the ball out of Max Hall's hands, but also take shots. We've seen him take one shot already on this drive that was incomplete, trying to find Jacques Robinson. This is now the 10th play of the drive, and it's four minutes and, and ticking. Clark was in motion. Here's Jefferson with the option, and he puts it in his pocket for a loss of two. Colby Clawson had him. Smart play by the freshman not to take a chance with a turnover. And that's a great play by number 92, Brett Denny, at left defensive end. He's just going to fight off a couple blocks as he gets down the line of scrimmage. Watch Denny now, Tommy. This is how you do it. Get down the line of scrimmage. It's a cut block. Play it off and get in the backfield and help out. A nice play that time by both Clawson and Brett Denny. Bronco Mendenhall told reporters this week he thought the cup block should be outlawed in college football. And, of course, it's an integral part to Air Force's blocking schemes while running the triple option. Second down and complete, but only a gain of about four. And Troy Calhoun said, you know, we, if we've got them thinking about it, I tell our guys we're already ahead of the game. If they're worried about our blocking scheme and cut blocking, then... We've already won that mental battle, but they pointed out we cut block our own guys in practice every day. We go ones on ones, the inside drills. We've had maybe one guy hurt over the last five years, and, and he was only a scout team. And you just feel it, though, Tom, because it feels differently. If you see it every day in practice, you get used to defending it, getting your hands down, and getting off the block. It's no big deal. Third and eight. Great. Job to get in the backfield. Jefferson finds a couple of yards that will bring up fourth down again. And Nixon had to stop. Fowler was in there. They got in that backfield in a hurry. Now, this is a fourth down play. This wasn't a big gainer, but this is the importance of the quarterback position. It's the read right there by Tim Jefferson. The read back at fullback, he's taken care of. I think a lot of people think that the option's simple. You either give to the fullback or you don't. It's a split second decision 
And Tim Jefferson does a nice job of it. This is a long field goal attempt for Ryan Harrison, one of the best in the nation. His long on the season is 49. This will be a 54-yard attempt. Flag on the play, and the kick was blocked. And we'll see what the flag was. David Nixon got in there to block it. And of course, the biggest block of the season for BYU happened early in the year. Illegal the formation by the kicking team. Penalty is declined. First down. Nixon got his hands on it. And that Air Force drive stalls. Third possession for BYU coming up in a moment. They lead seven to nothing. Their second possession of the game looked like this. It was a, an effective and efficient drive. Harvey Unga right there. You see the big power run there. Great job right there in the running game. Then Max Hall gets involved. Austin Colley with his first catch. And then Fui Vakapuna with a power 250 pounds at the goal line. Runs over Hunter Altman into the end zone for a touchdown. Five plays, 57 yards, 213, and Vacapuna from 11 yards out, running over Falcons. First and 10 for Max Hall and company. Once again, they go to the I formation. Two very talented backs that they can go to, and a lot of different formations that this BYU offense shows under Robert Anai. Austin Colley with the grab, and Colley. Has a first down on a 10-yard catch. Did you see Max Hall at the line of scrimmage that time? Changed the play, and that was one of the things in talking to him this week as he surveys, saying the coaching staff having a little more confidence in me now, allowing me to change the play. So he did that time. Unga quickly with a couple. And Max Hall to start this game has been perfect for BYU. And he's done a good job, Tom, of recognizing where the matchups are that they can win, whether it be Dennis Pitta in the middle of the field against the safety or that time man-to-man -man on the outside with Colley as Air Force was dropping another defender into that area. Max Hall started his college career at Arizona State, went on a mission, and returned to BYU. On second down now for Hall. Who led them to another conference title last year? Flips one over the middle, has Cali again. Cali has room to run, and he's finally popped out of bounds at the 32 yard line. Cali came into this game second in school history with 2,900 yards. He might break the record today. Once again, Air Force comes on a blitz that time. Little crossing route to Cali as it's a foot race between he and Andre Morris, and Cali's going to win that one. And a nice catch and throw from Max Hall to Austin Colley. Anthony Wright had a full head of steam and put a lick on Colley at the end of that play. We've seen the eye formation of too tight. Now shotgun and split backs in this BYU spread attack under offensive coordinator Robert Anai, who learned that system at Texas Tech under Mike Leach. And so far, that offense has skipped a beat today against Air Force. The Wings of Blue dropped in on us. Kui Bakapuna dropped in on the Falcons. And it's BYU up 7 0 at the end of the first quarter. We start the second quarter from the Air Force Academy with BYU leading 7 0. That ended a streak of 18 consecutive quarters with a score for Air Force. And BYU looking to add to their advantage here. Max Hall hands it off. This is Unga up the middle. Harvey Unga throwing guys out of his way, including the officials. Let's get an update on the head ball coach. What's going on? Let's go to Adam Zucker in New York. So first and ten for BYU after that Unga run and looking at the fade route and caught. Flag on the play. Michael Reed hauled it in over Anthony Wright. We'll wait and see what the flag is on. Reed, the senior from Baytown, Texas, working against Anthony Wright, just a freshman corner for Air Force. Troy Calhoun hesitant to put freshmen in the game, especially early in the season. They just they're done marching out of Jack's Valley, so they don't have their legs to them. They've been through basic training. They've got so much going on on the hill. Pass interference. Offense, number three. 
15 yard penalty. Replay first down. Michael Reed here, just a little push off on right. See it right in the back of right, number five right there. Just a little subtle push with that left hand. The official in good position right there to make that call. You see that every single Saturday where you get that one-on-one -on -one kind of fade route and you could probably call it either way. And that time they call it on Michael Reed. Another flag against BYU going backwards here. First and 25 for Max Hall and company. Hall has time, batted away. Good hands, and that time it was Ben Garland, 6'5 junior from Grand Junction, Colorado, over on the Western Slope. Nice play by Garland. That's what coaches always teach you. You play against this offense with an offensive line that is 6'6", 326 on the average, and so big Ben Garland, you can't get there with pressure. Just get your hands up, getting the passing lane, and it's right there. Good job of getting his hand up. See, no real pressure that time, but get in the passing lanes of Max Hall and get the big pause up. First incompletion of the day for Hall. Second and 25. Unga. Blocking from Vakapuna. Unga, for some reason, let off the throttle, and he picks up six yards on the play. Hunter Altman and Jake Paulson. A pair of seniors in their final home game with the stop for the Falcons. The Tommy Air Force trying to get guys in gaps and getting linebackers up around the line of scrimmage. Tim DeRuder, the defensive coordinator, getting his linebackers around the line of scrimmage, trying to show some different looks to that BYU offense, and that's just very good pursuit. And Jake Paulson, among others, gets down the line of scrimmage to make the play on Uga. BYU for one on third down. 16 plays thus far, six in the ground, 10 through the air. Four wide, Hall steps up in the pocket. He's got all day and a shot to the end zone, incomplete. Out of bounds was O'Neal Chambers. That's great coverage by Chris Thomas, the strong safety. That time, Tim DeRuder, the defensive coordinator, only a three-man rush as they drop eight. And look at Thomas, right in position, doesn't interfere, and really nowhere to go with the football for Max Hall. Almost out of bounds that time for O'Neal Chambers. That's a nice series on that Air Force defense. Mitch Payne, sophomore from Ogden. Eight of ten on the season. This will be a 46-yard attempt for Payne. As long as 45 this year. Got the distance. Splits it. Would have been good from 55. BYU adds to its advantage, but that penalty flag maybe cost them four points. 16th ranked BYU leads Air Force 10 to nothing. BYU pitching a shutout thus far. 10-0. 13 29 to go in the second quarter. 18 consecutive games with a score. Was snapped in the first quarter. Robert and I's offense knows how to put points on the board. They've got 10 thus far. Seems like BYU, though, biggest opponent has been themselves. They've shot themselves in the foot with that uh, penalty and pass interference. And Air Force Tommy has had some success. They have moved the ball. The court now down 10 nothing to make something happen offensively. Rembert from the two took a shot last time. This time tripped up and falls forward to the 19-yard line. So the freshman quarterback, Tim Jefferson, undefeated as a starter, will lead the Falcons back on the field. His coach, a former Air Force quarterback himself, Troy Calhoun. Sure, one of the things that Bronco Mendenhall at BYU talked about all week was not allowing the big play. Of course, last week, Kyle Halderman had a 74 yard touchdown. It was a 53 yard pass to Ty Paffett. So, Air Force needs to make something happen in the big play category. Here's the option pitch to Asher Clark, and he's picked up by David Tafuna, who's been battling some injuries, didn't play against Colorado State. Nice stop by Tafuna, the senior from Mesa, Arizona. Nice pitch from Jefferson. Good fill by Tafuna. He's the secondary man. They call him the cat safety. 
An interesting decision made by Bronco Mendenhall to defend Air Force today as Jefferson lets it go and that's good for a nine yard gain on second down. Andrew Rich had the coverage and uh, Bronco Mendenhall says, you know, this offense might be new to some of our younger guys, but I've coached against it a million times. So I want physical corners out there. I want our best tacklers on the field. We're not going to have to worry a lot about coverage. Quickly to the fullback. First down for Air Force. That's exactly what, Tommy, I think Air Force can do in this game. As you mentioned, changing tacklers. Brandon Bradley steps in for Brandon Howard. Andrew Rich will be the other corner out there trying to get the good tacklers. But Air Force has got to mix it up. Last play, two plays ago, they rolled the pocket a little bit, threw a nice out, then come back, quick tempo, give it to the fullback, keep some pressure on this BYU defense. And now out of the shotgun. Tight end Decker was in motion. Here's Newell again, and Newell gets wrestled down at the line of scrimmage by Matt Ayu, who's got some extra coaching after that last timeout from the BYU defensive coordinators, uh, coaches. Ayu's uh, filled in nicely. He's going to be out there for a lot of snaps today, replacing Sean Doman. He's done an outstanding job, all of these linebackers. Again, lots of pressure on a defense playing against this type of an offense. Of course, many of these linebackers back up. So it's a simplified defensive game plan allowing these linebackers to play fast. Jefferson on the option finds Asher Clark. Clark covered up on the perimeter. And that time it was David Nixon, the linebacker, who turned him back. You see the versatility of David Nixon and talking to Bronco Mendenhall. And we talked about the defense and really just wanted to single out both David Nixon and Jan Jorgensen. And you know, David Nixon, of course, a chance for three consecutive conference championships. Coach Mendenhall just loves his smarts, his athleticism, a good job way out there on the outside making the play. Jefferson to throw on third and ten. Great grab by Halderman, but it will only go for maybe four yards. Good hands. And with the clock ticking, 11 minutes to go in the second quarter, Air Force will be forced to punt. BYU doing a good job of just keeping everything in front of them, not allowing any of the wide receivers, not allowing that big play. Coming up, making sure tackles in open space. First punt for Ryan Harrison went 41 yards. Reed White is the BYU return man. White asks for the fair catch. Takes it at the 30. Toss it to an Air Force player. No love lost between these teams. BYU leads Air Force 10-0. Let's take a look at the icy hot quarterback hot zone. And Max Hall has just been sitting in the zone all afternoon. Well, that offensive line, the veteran offensive line's done a great job. And anytime you have that much time, there's a crossing run to Colley. Just look at the time. Just a great job there to Dennis Pitt. And remember, the only time this year, as Max Hall is 9 of 11, the only time this year where the offensive line didn't give him that protection was against TCU, and that was the game Max Hall did not have a touchdown pass. Not only didn't have a touchdown pass, a couple of fumbles and a couple of interceptions in that Thursday night melee in Fort Worth. Dead ball. Another flag. False start. Offense, number 70. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Freshman Matt Reynolds. You heard his teammates say, you're all right, Matt. He's got his brother at center. He's the only underclassman on that line. He's got another brother, Houston, that's on a mission right now in Germany. Of course, his dad, Lance, is the associate head coach. On the ground. Good stick by Chris Thomas. Let's go back to the lone loss of the season. The BYU Cougars sitting now at 9-1. and one. They were ranked number 9 in the nation on October 16th. Andy Dalton was able to carve him up a little bit. Here finds Jimmy Young. But it was Jeremy Curley who did the most damage in the wild frog formation. And perhaps most telling, those fantastic TCU corners were able to shut down Max Hall. Jerry Hughes had a pair of sacks. Hit Max Hall in the first possession and forced a fumble. BYU rushed for only 23 yards in that game. TCU ran all over. Second and 12. Air Force may have jumped that time. Well, nope, false start again against BYU. Their fifth flag. Well, Max Hall certainly didn't have much time. 
Dead ball, false start, offense, number 64, five-yard penalty, still second down. That's R.J. Willing, he's into the game at B for BYU. Look at what he's done against the rest of his opponents. 311 yards a game, 274 against TCU, no passing touchdowns, two picks, only averages... Uh, a pick every other game and a couple of fumbles. And Rocco Mendenhall told us that really you know, it was an ambush. We got exposed. Yeah. Some of our weaknesses. He said normally that happens in early part of the season, but since we just beat everybody easily at the early part, it was the middle part, and unfortunately it was a game and a conference game against TCU where their weaknesses were exposed. Hall tried to roll the pocket. Another flag, and Hall gets dropped. The second sack of the day for the Air Force defense, and Chris Thomas came in to flush out Hall. They said Chris Thomas plays a little half bubble off plum. That's why you like it. Well, that's a holding play right there. It's number 47, oh, Lamadola. Offense, number one. Penalty is declined. Third down. It's Vacapuna who's going to get called for holding, Tommy. As Ken Lamadola came on the blitz and followed up by Chris Thomas. What a huge play for Air Force's defense. Coaches told us that Chris Thomas plays with a little something extra. Not really all the way there. That's a compliment. To a defender it is. Second sack of the day for Air Force. We say that about you, Tommy. That's not necessarily <laughs> a compliment. But it would be true, nonetheless. Third and 28. Air Force only brings three this time. They drop eight. Hall moves the pocket, gets tripped up. Another stop for Air Force. It may not go down as a sack, but Justin Moore was able to make the stop. Tommy, that's great recognition by Justin Moore. You mentioned the three-man rush that time. Justin Moore was actually back in coverage, but he sees Max Hall. Here he is, beats that block by the tackle there, realizes that Max Hall's outside of the pocket. He comes up and gets just enough as our Force's defense now showing some energy. Tim DeRuda, the defensive coordinator, dialing up the right blitzes here in the second quarter. C.J. Santiago to punt it away. Much better than his first one. Reggie Rembert takes it on the run at the 42. Rembert trying to get to the Air Force sideline. Dances his way, maybe a block in the back, and here goes Reggie Rembert. Pass midfield to the 40. Still inbounds, and he returns it all the way to the 32-yard line. The momentum belongs to the Falcons after turning around the BYU offense. Now their special team puts them in great position. Yeah. Reggie Rembert got some help from his friends in that punt return. 26-yard return. Take another look. Yeah, you set up the wall, and you're going to get a nice block right in here. Take a look at block right there. Good job that time by Hyder. And then Rembert gets around. Here's another block right here. Could have been possibly... A block in the back on number 22, Brenton Bird Fulbright. And then down here at the end, look at that block. Right in front of Rembert and a nice return from Reggie Rembert. And those uh, extra yards, very important. And here comes the reverse. Asher Clark tossed it, and Air Force has room to run. Jefferson leading the way with the block, and John Wurzika takes it for a gain of seven on first down. Troy Calhoun said we want to get the ball in the hands of the freshman Rizika and Robinson. It's a fundamentally sound BYU defense, so Air Force trying to create some offense, find a way to get their athletes in space. Rizika gets to the outside. And a good gain on first down. And back to the basics for Todd Newell, the fullback. He's got another chain mover and another Air Force first down. Last week, Air Force in the first half put 21 points on the board against Colorado State. Today, they've been held scoreless, but they're putting together a drive. Previous long drive for Air Force ended in a missed field goal for Ryan Harrison, a long one. And injuries now piling up. That is Peter Lusk, the junior right guard. Another one. Where Zika has room again and a great cutback and he's to the 10. Kellen Fowler finally with the stop for BYU. That's a gain of 10. That's just good recognition by the Air Force coaches up in the booth. They've seen something that when they show that action, BYU comes to the action. A good job again. Little flip out from Jefferson to Warzika. Good blocking down the field as Air Force once again with another first down. They've held the ball now over 11 minutes. Newell 
up the seam. And Newell takes it to the six-yard line. Tenth carry of the first half already for Todd Newell. Run out of, ran out of his shoe that time. Seven minutes and counting. Air Force in the red zone has scored 88% of the time. 22 touchdowns and 14 field goals. They've got a fantastic field goal kicker. They want seven. Here's Asher Clark. Hit at the line. Touchdown Air Force. Clark spun off him like a top. And the Falcons have punctuated this long drive with a score. That's a physical run from Clark that time. He's going to run into number 16, Kellen Fowler. Right there, a physical run and a spin move into the end zone for Asher Clark. He's 5'8", 185 pounds, but that's a physical run from young Clark. Here's Harrison now. Perfect on extra points this season. It continues, and we've got a 10-7 game with 6.44 to go. Asher Clark, Trev, didn't just run over the top of Kellen Fowler. He also ran over the top of Terrence Hooks, who's only seeing time today because Sean Dolman is injured and had to undergo appendix surgery last night. An appendectomy, of course, and we've talked about the injuries for these BYU linebackers, but that was an outstanding drive for that Air Force offense. As they got an awful lot of their playmakers involved, of course, all set up. The special teams play great blocking, and Reggie Rembert setting up his offense. And we talked about the energy the defense played with the last series. Clearly the momentum in the favor of the Falcons. Five plays, 32 yards, a minute 25 for Air Force to score. And Asher Clark with his fifth rushing touchdown of the season. They're able to feed off of that defensive momentum and special teams and take advantage. Once again, Matt Ed at the one yard line and Asher Clark. Two defenders from BYU and Asher Clark gets the best of that battle. Ryan Harrison to kick it off. Go! Austin Colley and O'Neill Chambers back for BYU. Colley takes it on the run. Colley's got blockers in front, dragged down from behind, takes it out to the 22, a 21 yard return. Now we talked about getting pressure on Max Hall early. No pressure at all for Air Force. And now here suddenly Tim DeRuiter dialing up some blitzes and just an Air Force defense that's playing with some energy. Clearly, that momentum from the defense carried over to the offense that last series. 97 passing yards today for Max Hall. None on that last drive. They went three and out, and they went backwards 18 yards. Twice at Air Force line, got to Hall. Down the sideline, Hall to Colley, and Colley was inbounds. Great hands before he took the shot from Aaron Kirkhoff. Special throw from Max Hall. That's that cover two where you got the corner up front. Get a little jam right there as Kali is trying to fit it in between the corner and the safety. A nice throw from Max Hall. 23-yard strike. Hall 10 of 12. Now over 100 yards passing at a buck 20. And Kali gets a breather. Kali, the leading receiver in the nation. With 119 yards a game. Out of the eye again. This is Fuibaka Puna. And he powers his way to two and a half yards. It's been a busy day already for Austin County. Looking from El Dorado Hills, California. 65 big yards and a good job that time coming back to the ball. They've gotten him involved out in the perimeter. They've also gotten involved in the crossing routes. There it is right there, running away from the defenders. And then, of course, as we've just seen, up the sideline, stretching that Air Force defense. Four grabs, 65 yards. If he passes the century mark, it'll be his ninth straight 100-yard receiving game. On second down, Hall to throw. Over the middle to Pitta. Incomplete. Had a chance at a pick. But the Falcons were headhunting, and the safety didn't see the football. It's a good job that time. They brought Thomas on to blitz the safety, and so you're asking your linebacker, Justin Moore, to run with the tight end. A good job by Justin Moore staying inside the tight end, Dennis Pitta. Luke Yeager had a chance for the pick, couldn't react in time. BYU 0 for 3 on third down today. Well, what a difference. One penalty can make down on the goal line that was called on the offense on Michael Reed. Could have been a different story, up 14 to nothing. Suddenly this crowd and Air Force energized, only down three. 
And a fantastic crowd here today. BYU, pardon me, Air Force uses the timeout here. Time with out. a key third Air down Force. coming up for BYU. It's a three-point game from the Air Force Academy. 10 to 7, 16th ranked BYU with a tenuous lead on Air Force. Now let's take a look at the Bud Light stat six pack. Air Force has rushed for nearly 100 yards. But that BYU offense has been stoned, or at least they were in that last possession. You saw those penalties. That's one of the huge stories in this game, though, Tommy. Five penalties on BYU so far. Third and seven. Air Force jumps. Won't be enough for the first down, but it will set up a very manageable third and two. Rick Ricketts jumped. Dead ball. Offside. Defense. Number 90. Unabated to the quarterback. Third, third down after a five-yard pinning. So now all of a sudden, you get a team that can line up two tights, be power backs, and run on over the top of the smaller Air Force team. Instead of third and seven, they're looking at third and two. Third and three officially here, but it's a, maybe a long two. Still in the passing formation. Five wide. Air Force may be lined up offside right now. No flag. Fumbled snap. Ricketts almost got to him. Hall over the middle. Great grab. BYU first down. Michael Reed. Wow, what great poise from Max Hall that time. Flag on the play after the play was over. This might go against BYU again. After the play was over, dead ball, personal foul, BYU number 20, 15 yard penalty, first and 10. Now watch Max Hall here. The ball is on the ground, has the presence of mind to stay with it, and throws a strike to Michael Reed just over the outstretched arms of the defender for Air Force. See where the personal foul penalty is. Happened well after the play. It was called on Reed White. So fresh set of downs, but not much yardage difference. And that time Chris Thomas came up to swallow up Harvey Unger. Now Chris Thomas is absolutely all over the field so far this afternoon. We've seen him blitzing the quarterback. We've seen him supporting on the run. He's done a good job in the tight end game and the passing game. Chris Thomas clearly having an outstanding day for Air Force. So second and long, Unga outweighs Thomas by 45 pounds. Bakapuna motions out of the backfield for BYU. Hall, complete Pitta. That'll bring up third in about five. Thomas had the coverage. Chris Thomas has done a great job against slot receivers. We've seen the Houston Cougars this year. They have tremendous speed. Thomas was lined up with the slot in that game. Didn't allow a catch. And it's, you know, this day and age, it's not just wide receivers out there. A lot of times it's tight ends like Pitta and like Houston does. You better be pretty versatile if you're going to play safety. Kind of a John Lynch-style safety, in my opinion. Chris Thomas, he's physical enough to play around the line of scrimmage and yet fast enough and quick enough to cover that slot receiver. They call it third and six. Hall pressure dropped again. It's Chris Thomas. Hunter Altman back there as well. Well, Tim DeRuder, the defensive coordinator at Air Force, could not be doing a better job of calling some blitzes against BYU's offense. It's 32. Hunter Altman just inside, comes inside as the left tackle. Matt Reynolds, a young freshman, sees another blitzer to the outside in Rembert and allows Hunter Altman inside to make the huge play on Max Hall. Another sack for the Air Force defense. Not a great punt. Fair catch taken at the 17-yard line. Tim DeRuder told us yesterday, Trev, that he wanted to mix it up defensively. 
that they would either be rushing three or five or six or seven, but never four that just wouldn't get the job done. Well, I said it doesn't make any sense really to just run four. You're going to either try to get some pressure with five or six or rush three and drop into coverage. That last time was an outstanding job as Hunter Altman. Now watch it as he comes to the inside there. You've got another blitzer to the outside. So the young redshirt freshman Reynolds is in no man's land. Not sure exactly who he should block. Here's Newell. Busted up the middle. Todd Newell on the run. Still on his feet to midfield. A 33-yard sprint for the fullback, Todd Newell. Quick to the mesh once again is Todd Newell. It's going to be good blocking up front. Good job by Todd Newell and a great block right here. Seals it and up the middle there goes Todd Newell setting up this offense in great field position once again. Brandon Bradley finally brought him down. Under three minutes to go before the half. Newell at 90 yards for Air Force. Jefferson fakes the handoff. Wants to go deep. Has a man shot. Robinson off his hands. They've called his number twice. And the two Atlanta natives, the freshman Tim Jefferson quarterback and the freshman from Atlanta, the wide receiver Robinson. But they're getting close, Tommy. You can see it. It's going to happen. Third, fourth quarter at some point. It's going to happen. Here it is just over the outstretched arms of Robinson. Even if it doesn't happen, what does it do to the BYU defense? Well, your safeties have got to at least respect that passing game. They will not be quick, as quick to get to the fullback. On the end around this time, this is another big run. Kyle Holderman is off and running. Great blocking downfield. Holderman forced down at the five. Josh Cousins had his man locked up at the 12, and Colby Clawson finally forced him out. The Falcons on a roll after a 45-yard gain. Well, once again, trying to get the playmakers the ball in space that time, and look at Holdman there. Good block right there at the point of attack, and just the speed to outrun the linebacker Clawson that time, and a great block by Cousins. Air Force looking for its first lead. Todd Newell spins his way to the one-yard line. Holderman became the seventh different rusher today for Air Force. They are not lacking for weapons. Second and goal. Newell, touchdown Falcons. Air Force has their rivalries with the service academies, but there is no one they want to be more than BYU. This is all about Todd Newell. This was his drive. It was the fullback position. It was the physicality with which he ran. And an important drive for Air Force's offense. Harrison remains perfect. And the Falcons lead 14 to 10. 14 unanswered points for Air Force. More push-ups for the cadets. Worst thing that could happen to Bronco Mendenhall, Tommy. You're sitting there nice. You're up. Everything's going fine. Suddenly a change of momentum. And BYU has got to find a way. It's only a minute 55 left here in the second quarter. But can they get something going? Can they get a scoring drive? Something positive to happen here before they go into the locker room at halftime. And where did that momentum come from? It came from the defense. A pair of sacks against Max Hall. And then the positive punt return from Reggie Remper. It was the energy. It was Tim DeRuiter who's calling some blitzes. And suddenly the crowd got involved. Remmer had the great punt return. And then the offense and Todd Newell got started. Five play, 83-yard drive. Kyle Holderman had the long run to get it going for Air Force. A minute 20 off the clock. This Falcons team is playing loose right now. They're looking for their ninth win of the season with TCU on deck next week. Unbelievable for a team that was supposed to be Rebuilding. Here's O'Neill Chambers. Chambers to the outside, to the 30-yard line. And BYU will have good field position. Stay tuned for CBS College Sports Desk at the half. Darren McIntosh will sit down with Brian Jones and David Pollock. 
They'll go around the mouth. Nope. Update you on your BCS contenders, top 25 scores and highlights. Pollock's Georgia Bulldogs survived their trip to the Plains ball, today. Flag on that foul. return. Kicking team, number six, 15-yard penalty, first down. Keith, uh, pardon me, Kevin Rivers gets flagged for Air Force, a personal foul penalty. Just the second flag against Air Force comes at the most inopportune times. A quick strike BYU offense now has the ball in the 45. Well, BYU's had nine scoring drives this year of one minute or less. So don't think that Max Hall, this offense, can't quickly get into the end zone. Hall, 12 of 15 throwing today. Finds his tight end, George. And George carries Falcons with him for a gain of 17 on first down. Luke Yeager finally with the stop. Two great tight ends. That one was Andrew George. Stay with us. Coming up later in the game, we'll have the Home Depot tools for success. 17th catch of the season for George. He's got five touchdowns. Max Hall. Goes underneath, finds another tight end. That's Dennis Pitta. A fantastic one-two punch. Jaeger with the stop. It's a first catch for Pitta since BYU's opening drive, by the way. He was used the first two plays for Hall, and now he goes back to him. Here's these two tight ends, Tommy. Both these guys going to stand in the slot. That's what makes him so difficult to defend. Another flag. Dead ball. False start. Offense. Number 64. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Seventh penalty of the day against BYU. They average just over seven penalties a game at seven in the first half. And Trav, they've been they've been bad penalties. They've they've been not just changing field position, ending drive. Backbreakers. Would have been a touchdown. Offensive pass interference on Michael Reed. Had to settle for a field goal. Personal foul penalties. On first and 15, he floats one to Vacapuna, who makes the grab before getting tripped up. Justin Moore with the stop. Clock rolling, 47 seconds to go. BYU has three timeouts remaining. They haven't used one yet. It's almost with it. A guy like Max Hall in the field, just let him stay in his rhythm. Second and seven. They go to the end zone. Almost intercepted. He was looking for Collie. The freshman right had the coverage. Tommy Anthony Wright might only be a freshman, but boy, he plays with some confidence. Look at him up there. Knows it's one-on-one -on -one and has the speed to beat Collie to the end zone. Actually, Collie almost turned into a defensive back that time, trying to stop Anthony Wright from picking off the Max Hall pass. I'm not sure if that was straight, man, but Tim DeRuiter told us yesterday they'll go zero coverage a couple of times today. They can't afford to do it all the time, but with a guy like Wright, Tim DeRuiter getting a little more confidence in I think it was man free that time. You have one safety free trying to help on either side. Third and seven. Hall uses the timeout. Didn't like what he saw. And he is fired up timeout. at his offensive BYU. line. First charge time out of the half. Max Hall let his line hear it when he had to burn the timeout. 30 second charge timeout. Robert and I wants a whole offense over on the sideline. May have been his senior center, Dallas Reynolds, he wasn't happy with. Robert and I, the offensive coordinator, said, well, he's he's just a gutsy kid. He's a linebacker playing quarterback. He's he's essentially another Jim McMahon. So there you saw it. You love to have that fiery competitor, though. If I, one of the best quarterbacks I ever played with was Jim Harbaugh. And he had that sort, same sort of mentality. You know, he could play running back. Could have put him really anywhere you wanted on the field. That's the type of player that Max Hall is. And Robert and I would know good quarterbacks. Offensive lineman on the 1984 National Championship team, of course, led by Robbie Bosco. But before that, block for Steve Young and company. What a run of quarterbacks BYU had in the early 80s. McMahon to Young. Tabasco, who won it all in 1984. Third and seven. 
Up the sideline comes Hall, 15 of 19, a buck 86, hasn't thrown for a touchdown yet today. And BYU, one of five on third down conversions. Air Force brings just three. Hall over the middle. Almost picked. Flag on the play. It was Thomas who had the ball hit him in his numbers. And he might be the one that gets flagged for pass interference. Looked live like he was making a play in the football. Holding by the defense on an eligible receiver. Ten yard penalty. Includes an automatic first down. Will be half the distance to the goal. So BYU inside the 10 yard line now. It was Thomas who was flagged. Only 25 seconds remain. We've seen him go to the fade route a couple of times looking for both Collie and Reed. Reed is at the bottom of your screen, the left side of the formation. Collie at the very top. Hall on the draw, straight up the gut. Stop short. BYU has timeouts. Hunter Altman with the stop. And they got the ball timeout. down the three-yard line. BYU. And use their second, second timeout, charge of the half. timeout of the half. Like the call, Tommy. If you sit here, you put your four wide receivers out there. Call the quarterback draw. Pretty difficult on the defense. Spread everybody out. Look at number 64 down the field. Gets a nice block that time. The quarterback draw once again. Difficult is R.J. Willing. Makes a nice block on the linebacker. Trev, what an atmosphere and environment here this afternoon. This feels like a championship game. It could be because BYU and Air Force, two of four teams still trying to fight for the Mountain West Championship, a league that's enjoying unprecedented success this season. You could argue that they're the third best team, best league in the country. Big 12 and SEC heads and shoulders above others, but then the Big 10 and the ACC and the Mountain West each have three teams in the BCS standings. Well, certainly right at top, especially when you look at the Mountain West with Utah undefeated, BYU, of course, they beat two Pac-10 teams to start the year, and now Air Force with their eight wins here at home trying to knock off the Cougars. And you know why this is important? We're in year one of a four-year cycle where the Mountain West Conference could earn automatic inclusion if they continue to put up these numbers with their highest-ranked BCS team and the number of teams they have in the top 25. Certainly looks good. Fui Bakapuna is the tailback here. Iona Pritchard is the fullback, and timeout. Air Force uses a timeout. They wanted to see how Second they would charge time out of the half. How they would line up. What did BYU show them there? Because you made a comment earlier that BYU could perhaps second. just out charge physical timeout. Air Force. Well, we talked about their two big tight ends. You came out in the ace formation, two tight ends. You've got two running backs, one that's 235, Pritchard at fullback. Bakapuna's 253. So you go big. You're trying to establish a line of scrimmage. Now, the difficult thing, of course, Tommy, is you can still show that formation. And then, of course, Air Force tries to say, well, they're going to run the football, get everybody inside. Then you got Austin Colley one on one on the outside. So when you have a quarterback like Max Hall with his intelligence and his experience as a junior, obviously he has the ability to get you out of a bad play into a good play. And remember, that's exactly what they did on BYU's opening drive. On third down, they lined up in the eye formation and threw the ball out of the eye. So second and goal. Air Force. Looking to hold on to its lead before the half. And here's the shift. They show eye. They spread it out. Lacapuna, the tailback. Hall looking. End zone. Tip. Intercepted. A chance for a return. And Kirkhoff takes it out to the two-yard line. And Air Force can run out the clock in the first half. It was Kirkhoff who turned around the New Mexico game with a 94-yard fumble return. And now he gets his first pick of the season. Tom, it's just another one of those momentum-changing plays all the way down near the end zone here. Again, BYU going in to score, and Air Force up front gets their hands up. A great job once again. There's Kemp, big number 91, gets the paws up, knocks the ball into the hands of Kirkhoff. And once again, Bronco Mendenhall, a minute 55 on the clock when they started this drive all the way down the field and a turnover for Max Hall. 
Hall without a touchdown pass today. The only other game he hasn't thrown a touchdown pass was the Thursday night loss in Fort Worth against the Horned Frogs. Air Force has seized momentum in the second quarter, scored 14 unanswered points. Kirkhoff's forward momentum was marked at the three, so Jefferson doesn't have to worry about the goal line, takes one knee, and that will wind down the half. The Falcons hit the locker room flying high with a fantastic second quarter after they spotted BYU a 10 to nothing lead. And while the Cougars have put together some sustained drives, Air Force has taken advantage and been able to slow down BYU when it mattered. Tommy, I think the most surprising thing is Air Force now has 27 carries for 180 yards rushing in the first half. Aaron Kirkhoff knows how to seize momentum. He did it a few weeks ago against New Mexico. This was here on a Thursday night when Kirkhoff found this Brad Gruner fumble, picked it up and raced 96 yards for the touchdown. That put the Falcons in front of New Mexico, and Kirkhoff finished by handing the football to his cheerleader girlfriend. And then today, with the pick in the end zone to keep BYU out. And joined now by Air Force head coach Troy Calhoun. Coach, in your mind, what was the biggest momentum play of this second quarter? Well, we had more than one, and uh, we're going to have to have more than a couple in the second half. Uh, I don't know if there was a singular one. The uh, thing we've done is we haven't turned it over on offense and defensively. We've come up with some stops, but uh, that last play is a big one just because of uh, turning away points. So, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a this could be a Donnie Brook right down to the end and uh, and we just gotta find a way to get this sucker right down to about the last five or six minutes and uh, go from there. You know, coach, your defense providing you with some energy, but talk about the play of Todd Newell, your fullback, running awfully strong in the first half, almost a hundred yards on thirteen carries. Yeah, you know, it kinda reminds you of a couple of those guys used to wear red in on the side of their helmet there, you know. <laughs> now he's played well in the first half. You know, all these seniors, this is their final game at Falcon Stadium and uh, you guys are going to have to muster it up here these final 30 minutes. Coach, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you, Tom. Air Force head coach Troy Calhoun and his Falcons hold the lead over 16th ranked BYU. It's been a physical matchup so far for Falcon Field. We expect that to continue. Stay tuned for CBS College Sports Desk at the half. Tara McIntyre, Brian Jones, and David Pollock standing by after the break. Air Force in front of BYU by a score of 14 to 10 as we start the third quarter. First and foremost, you guys are getting a, a battle today. This is what you expected this week. Every time you come to Colorado Springs, you expect a battle. The Air Force kids play very hard. They're well coached, so this is exactly what we expected. Coach, clearly you had the momentum early. Then Air Force came back and got it. What can you do now in the second half to try to recapture that momentum? This is all about execution. Our missed cues, our penalties, uh, our missed assignments here and there have uh, allowed the momentum to shift. So clean play is going to be the answer. Coach, thank you. Thank you. Well, BYU head coach Bronco Mendenhall knew that this wasn't a game they could take for granted. It actually, we talked to him this week, kind of sets up nicely for him because without a tough game on this Saturday, it would be very easy for his players to overlook a lesser opponent with Utah lying in wait next week. No such opportunity here today. They trail by four at the half. Air Force will get the ball to start the second half from Colorado Springs. They deferred, remember, at the start of the game. So now with the lead, we'll have the opportunity to get the ball here first in the second half. Take a look at the first half highlights. This one started off like BYU was just going to cruise and crush. Yeah, Fui Bakabuna does a great job here against Hunter Altman. Gets into the end zone for BYU. And, and then all of a sudden, Air Force's defense came alive. And then that offense sort of fed off that defense. Look at the physical run by Asher Clark, the freshman there. And then Todd Newell, the big fullback, got involved. And after a nice drive, a knockdown ball that Kirkhoff was able to pick off in the end zone. A jump on the left side of the Air Force line on first down, and that'll be the third flag against the Falcons here today. Before the ball was snapped, false start, offense, number 79, five-yard penalty, still first down. At senior left tackle Keith Williams, let's take a look at the halftime stats presented by Allstate. Penalties, hugely important, of course, Tommy, the seven penalties for 55 yards. But it wasn't just the seven penalties. It was where those penalties occurred. 
at crucial points on the field for BYU's offense. And at crucial points in the game as Air Force was able to grab the momentum that we told you about. On first and 15, Matt Ayu has a stop on Todd Newell after a gain of perhaps four. So that will leave second and long for Tim Jefferson. Newell, a fantastic first half, 90 yards, his career high, 134 yards earlier this season against UNLV. You see how Tim Jefferson will come to the line of scrimmage, act like they're going to snap it, then look over to the sideline. That allows the Air Force coaches to see how BYU is lining up, and then they choose to play. Jefferson had a man on his hip, lost him, and gets forward to the 24-yard line. And third down coming up for the Falcons. They're two of six on third downs today. Jan Jorgensen had the stop. The Janimal. We talked to Jan Jorgensen this week, and he said, you know, in the offseason, I studied Chris Long, Jared Allen, Sean Merriman, wanted to become a better pass rusher. And he said, the thing I found out was they're just relentless. They play hard every play. That's what I'm trying to do. He's lost 15 pounds and feels like he's playing the best football of his career. I sent him a Trev Alberts pass rush DVD. I don't think he ever opened it. No, he, he didn't know who that was. <laughs> Jefferson on third down has it knocked away at the line of scrimmage. Brett Denny, 6'4", 260, was able to bat it away, and so now Air Force will punt it away. Now, important, as we've talked again, we talked to Coach Mendenhall, that momentum. You come out of the locker room, can Air Force get back the energy they were playing with? Now a three and out, so now it's a good chance for BYU to get some good field position to get that momentum back. They came after the punt. They don't block it, but it's a poor punt from Harrison. Harrison had two punts blocked by Navy in one of Air Force's two losses this season. Both were returned for touchdowns. 14 to 10, Air Force leads BYU. First possession of the second half for the Cougars. Let's take a look at the Home Depot Cougars for success. Well, you know, Air Force is going to have to get some pressure on Max Hall. They've certainly done that. Lamin Dole at linebacker. Chris Thomas has done a pretty good job as well. They've gotten their hands up. Kemp there with the interception with Kirkhoff. And three big sacks. He's been knocked down five times, hurried seven times so air force doing a good job of pressuring max hall three sacks for 32 yards incomplete oh boy would have had another opportunity justin moore that time and aaron kirkhoff kirkhoff already has one pick today they came in the end zone to close the first half just a simple zone defense that time and kirkhoff just steps right in front of dennis pitta and nearly Another turnover for Air Force's defense. Hall had trouble with the snap. Let's it go complete, and that'll go for a first down to Andrew George. Second grab of the game for George. Air Force says the ball came out, and the Falcons claimed that they covered it. Anthony Wright ended up with a pigskin in his hand down the sideline. Take a look. Good job, offensive line, of protecting that time. And into the sun comes the ball. Big George brings it down. That was loose. That football was loose, but BYU is on the ball trying to run another play. Knee yeah, was but down. His knee is down, Tommy. So knee is down. Ball comes out. The officials look like they are going to take a look at it, though. Previous play is under review. Fantastic angle on that second look. And a fantastic, I'm sorry, Tommy, a fantastic job by the officials as well. They've done a good job of quickly, if there's ever been a call where it looked like it was close, they took another look at it quickly. As you see George there, there's the left knee. You know, it, it was so instantaneous. I'm not sure that that ball wasn't coming loose when his knee went down. Reminder that the ruling on the field was that he was down. We've seen that all season long, unless there is completely obvious video evidence they are going to stay with a call on the field and so if it's at all close or it looks like it's instantaneous i think that they're going to continue with the football is byu so air force today trev has had two interceptions bounce off their defender's chest and while they haven't had that opportunity i wonder what the mindset is of max hall here's another look at the conclusion of that play the knee is down there there's the right knee, and then the left knee actually After comes review, down. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Yep. That's the right call. 
So that call is set, but what's the mindset of a, of a Max Hall? You're getting passes tipped at the line. You only have one pick. You could have three right now. Well, I'm not sure what his mindset is, but I can tell you that there's a couple of big running backs standing behind that offensive line, Tommy, that haven't gotten a lot of carries. And I'm not sure if Coach and I is going to go to that, the offensive coordinator, but at some point they may have to run the ball. Pitta catches and runs, uses the stiff arm to pick up a first down. Those two big backs, Harvey Unga and Fui Vakapuna, have averaged 7.3 yards a carry on eight carries in the first half. Why not go to them every single time? Because what you just saw is also happening. I mean, the passing game is open. They are completing passes. Pitta has six catches for 80 yards. It's what they do well. Uh, but I would agree with you, Tommy. I think they could add in a little bit more run to keep Air Force a little more off balance. BYU led this game 10-0. Air Force with 14 unanswered points. This is Unga now involved in the passing game. And a gain of 11 for Unga and a first down. Hall over 200 yards passing today. Reggie Rembert had the stop for Air Force. And, and one of the things that Coach and I obviously is saying, Tommy, is the offensive course. If Air Force is going to continue to bring five guys and continue to blitz us, we're going to have wide open receivers, just like right there as Unga is out in the flat. So it's just a matter of executing. And I think that's what Coach Mendenhall talked about at halftime. The plays are there. Guys are open. We just have to execute better. Ball on the Air Force 12-yard line. That's Kali in motion. Harvey Unga on the right side. Runs over a man at the five. Takes it inside the five-yard line. Anthony Wright was on the wrong end of trying to slow down that train. We've talked about number nine, Kali, and he's just going to come in here and get a really nice block. Over 1,000 yards receiving. Look at the block right there at the point of attack. Holds it long enough and a nice run by Harvey Unga. This is what this offense can do, Tommy. They can spread you out, but they have that big offensive line, two tight ends, a running back at 240 pounds. You can pound a defense seven and a half yards there on first down. And they, they brought tight end Dennis Pitta into the backfield as a fullback on that last play. Second down, Unga to pick up the first down without a score. He's a yard short of that, so that will be third and one now for BYU. Zunga took it over the right side. See, it's the same thing with Air Force when they establish the fullback. Everything opens up off of Todd Newell. If they establish this running game and they get some big holes opened up, it changes everything. Paul keeps it for the first down for BYU. That'll set up first and goal inside the two-yard line. Air Force with three on out on its first drive of the second half. And after a short punt, BYU is taking control, and now they're looking at first and goal. And there's some frustration there from quarterback Max Hall, who has had an off day in some respects, but still putting up big numbers and moving this offense. Yeah, that's what happens sometimes, you know, when you're quarterback. Quarterback draw, you get underneath that pile. Balanced you attack for BYU on this drive. You know us defenders, Tommy. You're dirty. You're nasty. You're not very nice. Bakapuna leading the way. Unga in. Touchdown, BYU. Good job by number 80 on the outside that time. Friel does a good job at a wide receiver position of sealing that left side of the offensive line. And just a little cutback that time. And a very impressive drive on a short field for BYU. Mitch Payne adds the extra point. And the Cougars back in front with a 17-14 lead. Max Hall efficient on that drive. Three for four through the air. Unga on the ground. 16th ranked BYU reclaims the lead from Air Force 17 to 14 here in the third quarter. Ow. The loud huh? duck. Time for the Affleck trivia question. BYU is one shy of its third straight 10 win season. When was the last time the Cougars had double digit wins in three straight years? That's a that's a that's a good question. Hmm. You asking me? <laughs> I was going to ask the other guys in the booth, but their mics aren't open. Looks like he's got a mic. Maybe he knows. <laughs> I think he would know. He's 26 and four in the Mountain West, in Mountain West games. Bronco Mendenhall has never lost a road game in the month of November. 
Rembert picked that one up off the skip. Makes a hand miss, and the ball's loose. BYU covers the fumble. They'll have the ball at the 19. Spencer Hadley popped it loose. Well, Tommy, that's how you get momentum back, huh? 21-yard punt by Air Force in their first series. The offense takes it right down and scores. And then Rembert comes in. What a great job of with the left hand pulling that ball out. And BYU once again in great field position on 20-yard line. And then Hadley covered it. A stoic Bronco Mendenhall knew they'd get a battle today. But after the first Air Force turnover of the game, the Cougars looking to add to their advantage. Hall finds George inside the 10. Altman with the stop. The BYU defense taking advantage of being able to force some turnovers, whether it's the defense or the special teams. 18 forced fumbles leads the nation. Quick pass, flag in the play. Kali at the five. Shoved out of bounds by Chris Thomas. Right had the coverage. Kali exchanging words with Thomas after the play. I talked with some former Falcons last night, and they said, listen, we get up for Navy. We get up for Army. Those are important games. We like all the guys in the front range. We want to win the Mountain West Conference. But when it's BYU on the other side, it just takes it to another level. Well, I think part of the reason is is BYU has had such success and not only in the Mountain West but prior to the Mountain Illegal West. Illegal substitution defense five yard penalty from the end of the run first first down. Troy Calhoun obviously not liking that call or having some questions about the call but back to the rivalry in BYU I think it's a compliment to BYU that Air Force wants to beat them so badly the gold standard they and of course Utah the officials are getting together. Troy Calhoun was pointing out to something on the other sideline uh, when Air Force was flagged for legal substitution. And so we get the correction. correction. We'll go for the previous spot, half the distance, replay first down. So Air Force will still be flagged, but they'll change the field position here. And they're going to march this one down to the three just outside the three yard line top of the formation Kali matched up with right first and goal Hall hands off Unga submarine at the three Kirkhoff came in to trip him up some other Falcons cleaned it up including Reggie Rembert good job by Kirkhoff that time and that's the one thing about this Air Force defense. They keep fighting and scratching in a pretty simple play that time. Travis Bright, the right guard, pulls around to the left. But a good job of getting in the backfield by Kirkhoff as Air Force is substituting post sale here trying to deal with this BYU formation. On second and goal, Pitt emotions. He's another blocker for Unga who bounces it outside and he is in again. The second touchdown this quarter for Harvey Unga and a flag on the play. Pushing and shoving after the fact. And Hall not sparing any words for Chris Thomas. 14 points in the first five minutes of the second half for BYU. There's a little zone blocking scheme here again as the offense does a good job. Good block by Fui Vakapuna that time. And of course, I think what BYU is saying is that Chris Thomas late out of bounds took a little shot on Harvey Unga. Result of the play is a touchdown. After the play is over, personal foul, defense, number 34, penalty be enforced on the kickoff. Robert and I told us that Max Hall has that linebacker mentality similar to when Jim McMahon came through Provo. And you could see it stepping up and trying to defend his teammate after that flag on Chris Thomas. So BYU with back-to-back -back scores will extend its lead and uh, awaiting the kick 
will put Air Force in bad field position after the 15-yard unsportsmanlike penalty against Chris Thomas. And guess what they've done, Tommy? They've established those two big running backs in the offensive line as BYU has it rolling on offense. Number 16, BYU in front of Air Force, 24 to 14 in Colorado Springs. Now time for the answer to our Aflac trivia question. BYU one win shy of its third straight 10-win season. The last time BYU had double-digit wins in three straight years, it's Lavelle Edwards' squad of great quarterbacks in the early 80s, which included the 1984 national title, a 13-0 unblemished record in 1984 under quarterback Robbie Bosco. I don't know of anybody who's had quite the tradition of quarterback play that BYU has. It's been very, very consistent from top to bottom. A great quarterback play at BYU. That uh, kickoff well through the end zone. Well, Bronco Mendenhall has brought a new attitude to BYU, and not just what they do on the field, but the restoration of the core values within the program and the university, starting with faith and family. He told us this week that after practice, I'm out of here. 30 minutes, perhaps, hit the shower, get on the road, get home. I want my assistants to do the same thing, and you can't argue with his success. Not only 3-0 all-time against Air Force, but consecutive undefeated seasons in the Mountain West Conference. Well, it's a system that works. They believe in it. They throw the football, and they execute very well. Quick pitch to Asher Clark. Clark surrounded immediately. A missed block on the perimeter. No gain that time. David Tafuna shed his blocker and found him. And Matt Ballman from his middle linebacker spot in there for the Cougars. And similar to the energy that we saw Air Force's defense play with in the second quarter, now you're seeing BYU's defense play with a little bit of a sense of urgency here in the third quarter. Jefferson to throw. They want to take a shot. They go underneath for a five-yard gain. Matt Ayu threw down Todd Newell on that Air Force sideline. Big game for IU in his first extensive time of the season playing in place of junior Sean Doman, who had 11 tackles in that TCU game. Yeah, for all those injuries we've talked about, I think the linebackers have acquitted themselves quite well here this afternoon for Bronco Mendenhall. BYU brings five. Jefferson incomplete. IU had the coverage on Sean Quintana. And fourth and four now for Air Force. Their second straight three and out here in the second half. They're going to have to lean on their defense to get something going and find some momentum. Ryan Harrison pulls double duty, the kicker and the punter for Air Force. They set up the return. Reed White. Fair catch, taken at the 41-yard line. The Tommy Tarmionga has gotten going here in the third quarter. This is all in the third quarter. He's gotten involved in the passing game out here in the flat. And it's also been about just physical running between the tackles. Look at him as he battles for extra yards. Had a couple touchdowns in the third quarter. They've got it going now, Tommy. Ten carries for 52 yards for Harvey Unga. First and ten now for BYU. Worst field position of the second half for BYU. Two tight end sets once again in that eye formation, Tom. And here's Unga. Unga powers up the middle. BYU trying to make do with the mismatched line now in the second half. Left guard Ray Fanga will not return. He suffered back spasms, so it's all everywhere. Back up R.J. Willing filling in at left guard now for the Cougars. And he's just a little guy. He's only 6'5", 3'12". So that really <laughs> ruins the averages for BYU. Second and six. Every one of Hall's completions in the second half have gone for more than 10 yards. This time he keeps it, and he breaks free. Hall with the first down grab, and Chris Thomas with the stop. Pardon me, Austin Colley on the direct snap. It's that direct snap thing again. We see it across college football as Austin Colley's that quarterback. A little zone read that time, just follows it in behind his blockers, and a good job of getting through space. We see this across college football, the direct snap to the playmaker, the difference maker. Good play by Austin Colley. So Colley now split out wide on the right side.
Hall looking that direction. Goes underneath the pit of the tight end. Every catch here in the second half for BYU has been made by either the tight ends or those big running backs. They're getting mismatches. And what's the difference, Tommy? Unlike the first half, we're not seeing Max Hall under a lot of pressure. You see that route that time by Pitta? He runs into the defender, not pushes off, but runs into the defender, then back the other way to create space for himself. Dennis Pitta again. We should point out that Max Hall and Dennis Pitta our brother-in-laws, Max Hall, married to McKinsey. Of course, McKinsey would come up and hang out with Max, and then she'd bring her sister, LaToya, and LaToya would say, you know, you got anybody else on the team? So he introduced them to Dennis Pitta, and suddenly they're brother-in-laws. And so, of course, Austin Colley will come up to Max Hall and say, hey, you know, what about me? I, throw the ball to me. And, of course, Max <laughs> Hall says, blood's thicker than water, buddy. Forget about giving me the ball. Hook me up with a wife. Second and five now. Here's Fui Bakapuna, and he rumbles for a first down. Eric Kirkhoff with the stop. Dennis Pitta's been busy today. It started on the very first drive of the day when Max Hall went to him twice. He got over the middle against zone coverage, and he's a big guy who can run well after he makes the catch. Well, Tommy, he just understands where the weaknesses are in a defense. Bakapuna. Stood up at the six-yard line, but only after a gain of six, Hunter Altman with the stop. I also like what BYU is doing now in terms of tempo. They're getting to the line of scrimmage. They're running plays, not unlike Air Force. Doing a good job of putting pressure on that Air Force defense. But back to Pitta for a minute, Tommy. And you know, So much of being a good receiver isn't just catching the football. is isn't just having speed. It's understanding what defenses are doing, understanding where their weak and soft spots are, and certainly Dennis Pitta understands those, and that's why Max Hall feels so comfortable throwing in the football. Second down, BYU, Unga. Yeah, great penetration up front. Unga had nowhere to go, and the penetration came from Justin Moore. Anthony Wright with the stop. That's what you do if you're a linebacker and you're a little bit smaller. Justin Moore, 5'11", 225. Goes down low that time on Bakapuna. An ISO block that time, and Harvey Unga then has to change directions. Good play, and an important third down play now for Air Force. Air Force doing a lot of personnel subs inside the red zone. In fact, inside the 10-yard line against BYU. It cost them with a penalty once on an illegal substitution. Third down, Hall steps up into the end zone. Touchdown, BYU. Austin Colley has the score. Austin Colley finally gets involved once again in the passing game here. And this is all about Max Hall, Tommy. Watch him now as Air Force brings some pressure. Max Hall feels it, steps into the pocket, and while he's rolling right across his body, and the only place his receiver could catch the football, a terrific throw from Max Hall. Extra point is good for BYU. BYU's third quarter has been magnificent. 120 yards and 21 points for the Cougars. Thirty-one to fourteen, BYU is taking control of this game here in the second half. They're thinking BCS. A lot will have to happen to get BYU into the BCS this season. Now let's take a look at the Bud Light Stat Six Pack. First and foremost, you got to win today and against Utah. Obviously, then you're in prime position. Your ranking climbs with a win against a top ten team like Utah. You're also going to have to have Boise State stump. All right, I mean, a one-loss BYU team that lost convincingly to TCU won't jump an undefeated Boise team. You wouldn't think so, especially since Boise has a history in the BCS, and they performed well, of course, in that Fiesta Bowl win over Oklahoma. Reggie Rembert takes a knee. Air Force will start it again from the 20-yard line. Does, does Air Force have an offense that can play catch-up? 5.15 to go in the third quarter? Well, the point is, I think you still have to do what you do. I mean, you're here in the third quarter with five minutes left, so you have to run your offense, but if you're asking me, Tom, do they have to take some shots? Yeah, they need to find a way to create some big plays. They did a pretty good job of that in the first half on reverses, getting Kyle Halderman involved. Find a way to get the playmakers the football in space. Halderman is in motion. 
Jefferson wants to throw. He goes underneath to his tight end. And a surge forward to the 25-yard line for the senior Travis Decker playing in his final home game here at Falcon Stadium. And Air Force head coach Troy Calhoun this week had a special night with his 18 seniors. Had them all over the house for dinner on Wednesday to talk about what a special day this could be. A little delay out to the flat for Travis Decker, one of the best student athletes in all of college football. He's a dratty semifinalist. Up the middle with Newell, one yard on second down, and that will leave third and four for Air Force. The Dratty Award, that's the, the academic Heisman in many ways. Here's a guy who's trying to figure out where he's going for med school. He's got all the tops on his list, Harvard, Northwestern, Stanford. He'll visit Georgetown and Duke. Send the AFCA Good Works team to Lowe's Senior Class Award finalist. Jefferson dives forward on third down. He'll be right at the 30. That will be good for an Air Force first down, first of the second half. The tackle again by Colby Clawson, who really has had a nice day. An awful lot of tackles on the day for Colby Clawson. Pretty good cutback that time from Tim Jefferson. As Colby Clawson now with five tackles at his linebacker position. Newell up the middle, finds two. What was working for Todd Newell in the first half that isn't working here in the second? Well, he was getting off tackle and he was getting to the mesh. The mesh meaning when he was, you know, when they had that ball in his belly, he was getting there quickly before BYU could get there. Now, BYU has made some adjustments and they've gotten inside and not allowed Todd Newell to get started. He's at 100 yards for the day. Here's a shot to Jacques Robinson. And Robinson, the freshman from Atlanta, has a nine, uh, will be just short of the first down. Stay with us. Coming up in the fourth quarter, we'll have the Wrangler five-star play of the game. It really doesn't matter what the defense does. I mean, if you're Air Force, if you're Troy Calhoun, you run what you run. You just have to figure out what by BYU is doing defensively differently, and you always have a read off of that. Newell with the first down carry. Colby Kloss in tackle number six today for BYU. And you remember Jan Jorgensen on the phone told us that the responsibility will be the defensive ends for this game, the fullback. Well, there that time it was the linebacker as Colby Kloss stepped in. So maybe the adjustment is that the defensive ends are not going to crash down now, that they'll allow the linebacker to step in and take the fullback. See if that opens anything up on the perimeter. Jefferson. Here's the end around. This is where Zika, and he's got room to run down the sideline, and he cuts back inside to the 40-yard line. So both freshman playmakers have been given an opportunity on this drive. Jock Robinson with the grab, and now John Warzika. Well, number 77, Ian Doolin almost had a great play right there with his left hand. Good cut block on the outside, and Warzika again as Troy Calhoun is trying to find an opportunity to get some of these young playmakers out in space. Andrew Rich was shaken up on the play for BYU. You, you brought up a great point on that replay, the cut block on the perimeter. A lot of times I think when fans think about cut blocks, they, they just imagine it all happening in the box and within three yards of the line of scrimmage. Not the case. No, absolutely not. Some of the best blocks happen way out on the perimeter, certainly legal as well. But, you know, I think there's some real confusion out there between a chop block and a cut block. A cut block is, is legal. A chop block is illegal. A chop block is when you're engaged with somebody up high and then someone else cuts you down low. That's a chop block. A cut block is a perfectly legal block on the outside. First and ten now. Here's Asher Clark on the outside. Clark cuts it back up, has a gain of five on first down. The Air Force has been penalized for chop block twice in two years. In both instances, they set the tape to the Mountain West Conference to review, and in both instances, the Mountain West Conference called it back and said, you're right, that wasn't a chop block. So, you know, that, that should be a little bit of a, you know, confidence boost for the guys who have to defend him, but still very much in their head. Here's Jefferson on the roll. Fires a bullet. Caught. First down, Air Force. You see, you can see now what Air Force is doing offensively. Clay Hendricks, the offensive coordinator. There's Jefferson. They're doing a good job of getting to the perimeter a little bit, both in the running game and then rolling Jefferson out. Getting outside the hashes a little bit, trying again to get in space. That's a wonderful throw from Jefferson. To Pavitt for 16 yards, the longest 
pass play of the day for Air Force. And now Todd Newell back to the line of scrimmage. Jan Jorgensen, Tommy, just made an All-American tight play as he's engaged with an offensive lineman from Air Force, got in the backfield, threw that blocker, blocker down, and grabbed the running back and made a nice play on Newell. He was, he was looking forward to this game because of his responsibilities and being able to take guys on and make it a physical game. What he says is that it's just weird playing against these guys. You think there's one play I got cut three times. <laughs> the same play. I get up, cut again. Get up, cut again. Here's the option on second and ten. Jefferson takes a lick from Brett Denny. Picks up two yards on second down. So third and seven coming up for Air Force. They've converted four of ten third down attempts today. You see what a defensive end goes through? There it is. Always down at the ankles. And then they don't just stop there. That's Nick Charles at guard. Once you go down low, then you just literally crawl as you continue trying to block Jan Jorgensen. Jefferson on the run. Gets pressure. Steps away. Courts one deep to the end zone. Bobbled and incomplete. Likely would have been out of the back of the end zone anyway, looking for Jock Robinson. A minute to go in the third. It's the element, though, that Tim Jefferson brings. You see the pressure. And what Tim Jefferson brings is Denny gets in the backfield and has him. Jefferson does a good job of escaping that pressure as David Nixon also was in the backfield. So a field goal attempt for Ryan Harrison. A 34-yard attempt. And he drills it. Wow, that's a good-looking kick. It bounced off the door. <laughs> a good 25 yards behind the end zone. Well, Tommy, this whole third quarter has been about Bronco Mendenhall. It's been about BYU. The Cougars have done a great job, as we talked about, coming out, finding some momentum. And they certainly have gotten that momentum back from Air Force, and they've done it on the ground. Harvey Yunga's done a great job got the turnovers on special teams they put their offense in a great field position as Harvey Unga scores again there and then there's the touchdown pass to Austin Colley from Max Hall so Robert and I the offensive coordinators you can see those numbers in the third quarter clearly in favor of BYU 21 points in the third quarter after they trailed at the half Seems like Air Force left all that momentum back in the locker room. We talked to Bronco Mendon all at the half. Typical Bronco just looking straight ahead, trying to figure out what they need to do. He knew exactly what they needed to do. Not, you don't get a lot of emotion from Bronco Mendon Hall. Not a lot of rah-rah. Just go out and get the job done. Execution. Do your job and do it right. The way you get momentum back is Air Force had the ball to start the third quarter. And it was two straight three and outs, and that allowed BYU's offense to get on track. Harrison puts it in the air for Air Force. This is Austin Colley. Pardon me, this is O'Neill Chambers behind Colley, who hauls it in. Chambers stays on his feet and takes it out to the 30-yard line. So 50 seconds to go in the third quarter that may have turned the tide for BYU and helped the Cougars find their 10th win. And this is the point now for Air Force's defense. You need to do a good job here if you're Tim DeRuiter of finding a way to create some pressure on Max Hall. Max Hall has tied the Mountain West Conference record for touchdown passes in a season. Brandon Dolman is the quarterback coach for BYU. He accomplished that feat in 2001. Flag on the play. Dead ball, false start, offense, number 64, five-yard penalty, still first down. That's R.J. Willing who's filling in for Ray Fanga, who left with back spasms in the third quarter. Eighth penalty for 60 yards against BYU. Michael Mendenhall coaching up everybody today. First and 15, Unga. Done a great job to bounce it outside. He's got Max Hall blocking for him. And Unga takes it out to the 35-yard line. Pardon me, that was Zakali blocking for him. And that uh, wildcat formation with Kali taking up. Uh, All you're going to do, Tommy, big number 74, that's Travis Bright. All he's doing is pulling around here. Now look at the linebacker there. It's a good job by Unga of reading it and bouncing it just a little bit. Kali on the outside, it's Reed on the outside. These wide receivers holding their blocks and a very nice gain on first down for BYU. Second and four for the Cougars. 
The whistle. More flags. Robert and I is out on the field. He is not happy. Dead ball. Delay of game. Defense. Using s signals to disconcern their snap. Disconcern their snap. Robert and I says they've been doing it all game long, and he thinks that might be a reason that BYU has had so many false start penalties. We've seen it before this season. Chud, you pointed it out. It's what you do. It may not be legal, but as a defender, it's what you do to try to confuse it. Well, is he saying they're calling out things, or are they jumping? Are they simulating the start of the play? There's a lot of different tricks you can do as a defender, Chuck. Called the run on first down. Loose plus the football. Picked up by Air Force. Chris Thomas has it. And the third quarter will come to an end with the Falcons in fantastic field position. Have they reclaimed the momentum that they need to get a home win on senior day? Max Hall tried to scramble with it. Took a pop and coughed it up. He was fighting for extra yardage. And the hit came. Ball recovered. Trev Alberts in Colorado Springs where BYU took control of this game in the third quarter with three touchdowns a 31 to 17 lead but Air Force after the takeaway has great field position in BYU territory as we start the fourth Asher Clark four yards on first down Matt Ayu with the stop you remember, Tommy, in the third quarter when you asked me when Air Force had the ball, do they go away from what they do? Do they have to start taking some shots? That's a perfect reason why you don't. You get the turnover in good field position once again. And the tenth game this year with at least two turnovers, Air Force has done a great job of creating them. Warzika trying to make something happen, has to fight to get his way back to the line of scrimmage. Kellen Fowler in there with the stop. For BYU. Is he Tom? I, I think this is a very important play. This is the second down play here. Once again with Warzika. They've been trying this play, but a good job again. There's 16 Kellen Fowler staying at home. This important play. Air Force has to convert here on third down. Out of the eye. Newell. First down Air Force. Boy, Todd Newell, Tommy, is running with a passion. The senior playing in his last home game here just hits the hole, fights through some arm tackles, and gets an important first down as Kellen Fowler once again steps up to make the stop. 109 yards and a touchdown today for Todd Newell, who earlier this season reset his career high in rushing in three straight games. Jefferson trying to run out of trouble. Gets to the line of scrimmage and picks up a yard. He had David Nixon hot on his heels. But one of the reasons why Air Force is doing a lot of those end arounds is because of how hard BYU is running to the football. A great job of pursuit that time as David Nixon gets in the backfield, sort of forces Tim Jefferson to give some ground, still able to get a short gain out of it. Second and nine. Here's the reverse where Zika for the third time trying to get to the perimeter and just got back to the line of scrimmage. Matt Ayu stayed at home. That will set up third and nine now for the Falcons. See what I've talked about is BYU. They're flowing to the football so well. So Troy Calhoun and Clay Hendricks trying to take advantage of that. But as you mentioned, it's Matt Ayu who does a really nice job of not biting on it, staying at home and making the open field tackle with eight tackles today for Ayu. First start for Ayu of the season. Third down. Jefferson fakes a handoff. Has time. Courts one deep looking for Robinson. Overthrew his man. That'll bring up fourth down now for Air Force. Troy Calhoun out on the field. Uh, I think you said you're going to stay out there, fellas. We're going for it. Well, that's 12-31 just... to go. Sorry, Tommy. Brandon Howard with good coverage that time. Of course, you do that little fake to the inside little play action to Asher Clark hoping you can get the corner to bite but the junior Brandon Howard number four does a good job of staying at home trying to use these freshmen 
Air Force 10 of 17 on fourth down. But Jacques Robinson doesn't have a lot of game experience under his belt. Four wide. Jefferson over the middle. Incomplete. Air Force turns it over on downs with 12.26 to go. BYU leads Air Force 31 to 17. We're back to the academy in a moment. 31 17, BYU in front of Air Force. And now let's recap with the Energizer game summary. Seven penalties for 58 yards against Air Force. BYU's been penalized eight times. Wunga with two rushing touchdowns, both in the third quarter. But BYU has coughed it up a couple of times today. Air Force may need a takeaway to get back in this game. Here's Unga. Crawls forward for two. Chris Thomas has been busy for the Air Force Falcons. Well, Tommy, he's got 11 tackles on the afternoon. and He's gotten a sack, been in the backfield, forced a fumble. Picked up a fumble as he does right here, hangs on to it. Chris Thomas, uh, a remarkable player for Tim DeRuiter in his defense. Second and eight. Hall to throw. Good pocket presence. Let's it go over the middle. Almost picked. A flag in the play will likely be pass interference. Kirkhoff had another one bounce off of his numbers, but I'm not sure it will matter in the end. Kali trying to come back to the inside, saying that he was held by an Air Force defender. Chris Thomas is very close to the officials, wanting to hear what they're saying. Pass interference, defense, number five, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. The freshman, Anthony Wright. Well, Austin Colley is just going to be split out wide to the right. Max Hall trying to buy a little extra time. Colley tries to come back inside to make the play. Uh, unless the hold was substantially sooner than what we saw. I didn't see it. Seven penalties against the Falcons today. Here's Fui Vakapuna. Picks up nearly two on first down. Justin Moore with the stop for the Falcons. So Fui Vakapuna and Harvey Unga share the load in that BYU backfield. You can just see, Tommy, how this BYU offense, I mean, obviously beat Washington, beat UCLA. Uh, this is an offense that's as, uh, about as good as you can get in the sense that you've got a great tight end. You've got a couple of tight ends, two big running backs, a quarterback who's accurate, and a guy who can stretch the field in college. Pretty difficult to defend. Bakapuna hit in the backfield. Second and third effort will carry him back to the line of scrimmage. Brian Kemp had to stop. But of course, now the enemy for Air Force is the clock as we go under 11 minutes. BYU just content to take as much time as they possibly can. Three and out here would do wonders for that Air Force defense. All right, Tommy, you did the you did the Utah game. You see BYU now. No predictions, but what do you think? How do they match up? I think the key for Utah will be getting pressure from their ends. Guys like Paul Kruger can they get to Max Hall? Air Force can't. That pass is incomplete. Although Air Force has three sacks tonight, that'll be a three and out. And they're clamoring for a call. Michael Reed wants a flag. Look at that. That talk continues to chatter between Thomas and Hall. Robert and I says they turn up field and they hit him. Well, Michael Reed is on the outside now. And what they're saying is every time they come out of their break and come to the inside, but there's contact there. There's Reggie Rembert. Of course, Air Force says we're entitled to the same position as you are. We were there first. Fair catch taken at the 15-yard line. The onus will be on a freshman quarterback. Tim Jefferson as BYU leads Air Force 31-17. to 
31-17, BYU out in front of Air Force. The Falcons force a three and out, but the Falcons have had trouble against the elite. I guess it's good when you win the games you're supposed to win, but they're having trouble just 14 and 61 all time against ranked teams. Uh, of course, this season they're playing three ranked teams for the first time since 2002, and so the level of competition certainly has risen at least this year. And it's risen with the strength of the Mountain West Conference. Jefferson running the option. Has room. Here he goes. A great cutback. And Tim Jefferson's down the numbers. Finally forced out of bounds. Tommy, you asked what's going to be the changeup now that BYU has changed who takes the fullback. Well, the changeup has to be that Tim Jefferson has to be able to get to the edge. Great job that time. Outruns the linebacker that time, Matt Ballman, and gets to the perimeter. And a great game by Jefferson. It's a good job once again by Brandon Bradley to come up to make the play. A 45-yard sprint for the freshman signal caller. Now tied here, hog tied, wrapped up and dropped after gain of one. Brett Denny for BYU. You know, Tommy, going back to that graphic about playing difficult teams, winning big games, you think about the eight wins that Air Force has had this year for Coach Troy Calhoun. And in those eight wins, look at the combined record. 29 and 50, 6 of 20 and 25 in the Mountain West Conference. So a great opportunity here this afternoon to beat a well thought of BYU ranked football team. Jefferson on the option again. Late pitch to Clark, lost the football, and Jefferson covered it up. David Tafuna was there. It's a little option play again, reading to the outside. Jefferson pitches it. Asher Clark can't bring it back. Fortunately for Air Force, Jefferson is there. Asher Clark saw David Tafuna in his sight. Tafuna had the crosshairs on Clark. That's why he took his eyes off the football. A third down. Play action. Jefferson will scramble for it. Goes straight up the middle. And that'll set up in four down territory. A fourth and about four now for the Falcons with 840 to go and counting. Here from Colorado Springs. Now, there can't be any question about this call. Of course, they went for it on fourth down the last series, so. Halderman and Cousins to the wideouts. Jefferson with the pitch. Asher Clark gets a hold of the football, has a first down, and down to the 25-yard line. Clay Hendricks, a great job at offensive coordinator. A little option to the right as Coach Mendenhall sees something he doesn't like. But a good read again from Tim Jefferson, the quarterback. Once again, the instantaneous decisions you have to make. There's 43. Nixon forces the pitch. Good block on the outside and a first down for Asher Clark. Nine-yard run for Clark, his longest of the day. Now they bust up with the fullback. Todd Newell brought down by an ankle. And that was Kellen Fowler with the stop. So here goes Air Force now, eight minutes to go. And they're inside the red zone, facing a second and four after that big fourth down conversion. Air Force came into this game fourth in the country in rushing yards. They go to two for the first time, and the fullback takes it in. Touchdown, Air Force. Jared, two with the score. Well, Jared, two comes in to spell Todd Newell, and a good job right there. Good block by Ty Paffett, number 19. He comes in, initial block there, and another block from Jock Robinson and a terrific run by Jared too as Air Force continues to fight and scratch and come back for these 18 seniors. Troy Calhoun and offensive coordinator Clay Hendricks wanted to get Jared too involved in this offense because of his breakaway speed. He carried the load last week in the second half. It's his show again today. Gotcha. Seven-point difference now. Air Force has climbed back in this game, trailing number 16, BYU, in the fourth quarter. As we take a look at the Bud Light stat six-pack, 321 yards on the ground for Air Force. 
Gently down the stream for the Falcons. There's no sense in an onside kick here with 7.37 to go. I don't think so, Tom. You don't have to. You're down seven. Your defense now has some energy. It's important, though, for the kickoff coverage unit to get down and make a play. Colley is the return man. Back there with Chambers. Chambers will take it out of the end zone after a yard deep. Turns around at the 10. Fights for it at the 15. There's a flag on the play as Chambers brings it out to the 17-yard line. Well, they had the speed to turn him around in the kickoff coverage. It was Luke Heider who got down there first, and Falgut had to stop. During the, the return, holding, receiving team, number 58. 10 yard penalty, first down. Before the penalty, take another look at the touchdown. Let's go back to the touchdown. Now, this is two, the fullback. This is right here, Ty Pappen. Watch the blocking in here for two as this play develops on the 19 yard touchdown. Stop the tape. Look at this alley right here as Pappen, the offensive line, the tight ends. Keith Madsen does a great job there of blocking at the point of attack, and then it's two, breaking tackles into the end zone and getting Air Force right back in this game. Another penalty killer for BYU backed up at their own eight after the hold on the return. Hall got it away to Unger. This offense in the second half has been all tight ends and running backs for BYU. Tommy, that time Chris Thomas, the safety, he's going to come on a blitz, and here he is right here. He's going to come on a blitz and watch number one, Vakapuna, step up and make a great block for Max Hall in blitz protection. 72% of BYU's offense has come from the running backs and the tight ends. 259 of their 359 yards today. Hall, incomplete, a hair behind Pitta, here's a flag. Pushed off, perhaps. Andre Morris had the coverage. Offensive pass interference, number 32. Penalty is declined. Third down. You know, Tommy, as I told you, though, Dennis Pitta does a great job, but if you're not careful, you can get called on that. He understands the weaknesses and the soft spots of that defense as he runs into the defender a bit and then goes back to the outside, but you can't use your hands as BYU continues to just kill themselves with penalties. Max Hall warms his hands right in front of the cadets in the north end zone. Third and eight. Here they come, Air Force with... Four different guys standing up for the blitz. Hall rolls, sets up, hit as he throws. First down grab. They go back to Pitta, and he converts. A big-time catch for Pitta, who gets up with a limp, and Hall had the heat on him. Max Hall shows his veteran leadership that time, as once again, Chris Thomas is going to come off the corner, and he's going to get close to a hit right there on Max Hall, who delivers a strike. And good for Dennis Pitta as he comes down with a crucial catch for BYU. Pitta getting attention on the BYU sideline. Andrew George replaces him on the left side of the BYU line. The shovel to Colley. He's got a lane on the outside and tripped up after a gain of eight. Chris Thomas with the stop for Air Force. Six, 12, and rolling, and the Falcons need the football back. What a game, Tommy. Both of these teams fighting to the bitter end, and boy, give Max Hall and BYU some credit. Air Force had all the momentum. They continue to bring pressure. It'll be easy for BYU again for another turnover mistake, but Max Hall leading this offense and showing his veteran poise. Second and short. Pump fake, goes over the middle to Andrew George. Another grab by a BYU tight end, and another first down for the Cougars. Fourth catch of the day for Andrew George. A season high for the junior from Inglewood, Colorado, just up the road. Air Force just really hasn't had an answer for these tight ends of U or, uh, BYU. They've just done a great job, both Pitta and George, of finding that soft spot and sitting down. You see with BYU with a huge advantage in first downs. 
Air Force has the advantage in takeaways. Can they steal another? Almost. Wow. Great break on the ball by Anthony Wright. Enough to disrupt the pass to Michael Reed. And just that close to a pick six for the Falcons. That's a pretty veteran play by Wright. He's only a freshman, but he waits, he waits. And then he breaks on the ball, gets his right hand just inside of Michael Reed and breaks up the pass. A veteran move by a freshman corner. All second half completions for BYU have gone to the tight ends. And a falling grab, they say, out of bounds in front of the Air Force bench. Which is it? Catch made. Max Hall says first down. It was Kali on the boundary. Uh, we'll have to take another look at this. All of Air Force and their coaches were saying no catch. Again, it's Hall rolling to the right. Rolling on the field was a completed pass. Boy, his, his knee came down, but it looked like his upper leg, his thigh, was down across the line at the exact same time. It's a bang-bang play. It's a difficult call. It happened so fast. It's a good throw by Max Hall and a great catch once again from Austin Colley. Of course, the all-important thing, Tommy, is that it was ruled a catch on the field. They haven't announced that it's under review. Previous play is under review. All right, now they'll take a look at it. I got to tell you once again, I think these officials, Tommy, have done a great job this game. Well, these calls have to be right because there's a lot on the line Absolutely. in this game. Absolutely. Could not agree more. It's too important. Anything that's been close, they've immediately reviewed it. And this is another play. There's Colley again as he's going down. The knee's inbounds. Does he have control of the football? Again, as I said, I think the all-important call was that on the field it was called a completion. These are two teams still in the hunt for the Mountain West Conference Championship. I, I think they call stands. I, I've been wrong many times before because we have a train of thought that we get onto when we're watching the replays. Obviously, completely different right next door to us in the replay booth. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Good job by the officials, Tommy. That's a right call. BYU's season boils down to seven days. Today against Air Force, next week against Utah. Could a BCS berth be possible for Bronco Mendenhall? Conference title certainly is out there and available. We could end up with a three-way tie for the Mountain West Conference Championship. After that, if there's not a BCS team involved, it will mean the Bulls decide who they want. First and ten. Hall to throw on first down. A pump fake. He's going deep to Cali. Good grab. Touchdown, BYU. A 45-yard strike to Austin Cali. BYU wanted it all on first down. What a call by Robert Anai, the offensive coordinator. You're in that running formation, tight end. I formation, Air Force thinking they're going to try to run some clock. You get man to man on the outside and look at Austin Colley. Get some separation on Reggie Rembert that time and a terrific throw from Max Hall. A two touchdown lead for the Cougars with 4.46 to go. Two touchdowns today for Austin Colley. Robert and I drew it up in the dirt. And Max Hall executed it to perfection. Took a pop at the end. He'll tell you, well worth it. Cougars up by two touchdowns now in Colorado Springs. A 91-yard drive for BYU to extend the advantage 38-24. to 24. 450 yards of offense today for BYU. That drive started at their nine after the penalty and the kick return. 244 off the clock. And Austin Colley on first and ten took the pump and go in from 45 yards out. And how many crucial passes did Max Hall complete? Remember that one to Dennis Pitta? They had to complete it. It's a lot of fun for this BYU team and two guys that know each other well. Austin Colley on the right, Max Hall on the left. And yep. Boom, I took a lick and I just winged it up there. And it was Chris Thomas who gave him the lick, who's been all over the field this afternoon. But boy, credit Max Hall. He's been under an awful lot of pressure. He stood in there and there's Austin Colley, 130 yards now. 
Gardner needs about 35 yards to become the all-time leading receiver at BYU, passing Eric Draghi. Jefferson on the design draw has nowhere to go. David Nixon swallows him up. Trev, isn't momentum a funny thing in college football? Not only have we seen it at work in this game, Air Force took control in the second quarter, BYU took it back in the third, but also over the course of a season, or even a half or quarter season. And now, should BYU hold on, they're going to take a lot of momentum into their season finale against Utah. Absolutely. Uh, people might not think this, but on the road at Air Force, the way this team is playing, if BYU can hang on, this would be a huge win for the Cougars. Jefferson finds Josh Cousins for a first down. Brandon Howard had the coverage. And now Cousins gets a breather. First grab of the day for the junior Josh Cousins. Air Force needs to be in a bit of a hurry. Jefferson pressured, scrambles, uncorks one to the sideline, and a big hit from David Tafuna. In that last drive, Tommy, Air Force had a terrific drive and got involved on the perimeter a little bit. Warzeka got to the outside, but then it was about Timmy Jefferson running the option, getting to the perimeter, and then, of course, Jared to the fullback, right up the middle, 19 yards for the touchdown. Jefferson lets it go again. It's tied in Decker with the grab. And for Travis Decker, his second grab of the day. First and 10 Air Force, 334 remaining. Falcons have all three timeouts remaining. Jefferson gets a key block, lets it go again. He's been magnificent through the air on this drive. That'll be a gain of seven on first down. Tafuna with the stop again. And you know where he seems to be the most comfortable is on the run, Tommy. Roll him out left or right on the move. He seems to be even more accurate as a passer. Jefferson four for four on this drive. Jefferson rolls another completion he's five for five and Air Force has a first down Fowler with the tackle for BYU Three wide for the Falcons. Jefferson moves that pocket again. Pump fake. He's going deep into double coverage, and it's picked off. Intercepted by Brandon Howard in the end zone. The first of the season for the junior from Riverside, California. Jefferson was perfect on the drive, and with 2.44 left, he wanted it all. And Jeffrey Jin just a little to the left that time as he throws it up. Two defenders clearly there. And that's Brandon Howard, who Coach Bennett all told us is probably our best cover corner. Good ball skills that time as he gets turned around, goes up and picks it off. It's a pretty good effort by BYU's defense. A defense, Tommy, coming in that was banged up. Sean Doman, the starting linebacker, not playing because of an appendectomy. A lot of pressure this Air Force offense puts on a defense. Pretty good effort by BYU's defense. So now Max Hall can try and run out the clock behind big Harvey Ungo, who fights his way for a yard. Ben Garland on the stop for Howard. One of two takeaways for BYU today. Air Force, first charge time on the half. Cougars have also turned it over two times. Clock operator, please reset the game clock to 2.36. Seems like a missed opportunity for Troy Calhoun and this Air Force bunch. Their largest loss of the season came to a top-ten team, Utah. Lost at home by seven. Lost by six to Navy in a game in which they outplayed their rivals from Annapolis. And then here today, the BYU offense, just too much. Take a look at our Wrangler five-star play of the game. Well, Tommy, it had to be Max Hall to his buddy Austin. Here it was. It was first down. A little pump fake under pressure from Chris Thomas. Throws it up. And Colley gets some separation. 45 yards into the end zone. The Wrangler five-star denim play of the game. Colley, seven grabs, 130 yards, and two touchdowns today for BYU, which trailed at the half. 14 to 10.
A 28-point second half. 21 of those coming in the third quarter. It's setting up to be a big-time showdown on our sister network next week, isn't it? Absolutely. BYU, Utah for all the marbles in the conference. Utah trying to get back to the BCS, a return trip to match what they did in 2004 by being beating an undermanned Pittsburgh team. Thomas with the stop. Timeout. Air Force. Second charge timeout of the half. Trev, I think the wish for the Mountain West Conference is that Utah... 30-second charge timeout. If they are to win, not that the conference would be pulling for one team or another in a season finale, but if they are to win, the conference sure would like Utah to be matched up opposite of a quality opponent. I'm talking top ten. Not a Pittsburgh team with Walt Harris on the way out that's going through the motions in the Fiesta Bowl. Let them prove that they belong among the nation's at least. And also, of course, a conference title is still on the line. Well, you're absolutely right. And first and foremost, Utah will have a lot of work to do to get through this BYU team at Max Hall. But I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, of course, when Utah was able to beat Pittsburgh, not a lot of respect nationally because Pittsburgh really wasn't a great team. Obviously, Boise State got a lot of respect nationally because of the way they won their game against a well-thought-of Bob Stoops Oklahoma team in the Fiesta Bowl. But... I think it'll be interesting as we go down the line here the next few years when you watch the Mountain West and these guaranteed automatic bursts at some point with the success that this conference has had against other BCS conference schools. I mean, the Mountain West was 6-1 and one this year against the Pac-10 alone. So it's just been an outstanding year for the Mountain West. What if you had an opportunity on the final Saturday of the college football season to institute flex scheduling among the nation's elite? If the season ends today, this is what this plan may look like. Oklahoma travels to USC, Texas to Utah, Boise State to Penn State. These are all teams that either don't have a conference championship game or like Oklahoma and Texas will be left out even though they're top 10 BCS teams. Utah will get a chance to establish their resume even more by taking on a big time team because they, they may not get that opportunity in a bowl game. Well, you're right. And something's going to have to happen. And we talked to Bronco Mendenhall about it on the phone. And he said, look, we have a, our current system rewards undefeated teams. So why play anybody? There is no strength of schedule. Progress will stop. No Time strength out. of schedule. Air Force, it. third and final charge timeout of the half. And Bronco Mendenhall said that even us here at BYU, we're having a difficult time scheduling. No one will play us. Why would you want to play BYU? If a system you have has no strength of schedule, Ball State right now is about 111th strength of schedule. Okay, so you have a system that says play, if you're the Big Ten, play nobody, play your Big Ten schedule where you don't play everybody in the Big Ten, no conference championship game, and you got a great chance of making the championship game. So we've got a system that some teams play 12, some 13, no strength of schedule. I think, you know, as we move forward with the parity, with teams like BYU, Utah, even Air Force, TCU, there's too many teams now. There's too much at stake. There's too much put into this by people like Bronco Mendenhall to just continually, arbitrarily determine who the national champion is. Well, you bring up a good point about strength of schedule because without BYU's two Pac-10 wins, Utah's win against Oregon State, a tough loss on the road by TCU against Oklahoma, then the Mountain West Conference doesn't have momentum, doesn't have that national attention in the claim and it really all got started one weekend when they routed the Pac-10 that was the weekend that UNLV beat Arizona State that Arizona lost on the road to New Mexico BYU blew out UCLA and then I think that that caused the media and the fans nationwide to stand up and pay attention Whoa. to the Mountain West Conference now all of a sudden when you lose in conference to a good team, folks know it's a quality opponent. When TCU loses on the road to Utah, not a bad loss. That was a great game. And not only that, but when you have a middle-of-the-pack Mountain West team beat Arizona, Arizona going into today was 6-3. Yeah. I mean, and they're in the Pac-10, so that's sort of the point. Here's the other thing about the BCS, Tommy. How do we you like know... It? that the top three teams in the BCS don't necessarily all come from the Big 12 South. Great point. The point is this. If the top two teams in college football happen to be in the Big 12 South, although it, you know, is theoretically possible they could play for the national championship, highly improbable. So the point is simply this. We have a system that really wouldn't allow Texas and Oklahoma or Texas Tech and Texas to really play for the national championship. On third down, Unga bounces it outside. He's got a first down, and that will seal the game for BYU. Another tackle for Chris Thomas' total. 
But a missed opportunity for Air Force here today. Thomas will rack up 17 tackles on the afternoon. The stage is set for BYU and Utah. And if that rivalry needed any more energy, any more enthusiasm, any more attention, all of a sudden they got it. Remember in 2004, Utah routed BYU en route to their BCS berth. Tommy, let me just tell you something. Uh, the Mountain West Conference has got to hope they're able to hang on to people like Troy Calhoun and Bronco Mendenhall, two of the best coaches in country happen to reside in the Mountain West Conference. At least two. And Troy Calhoun and Bronco Mendenhall meet at midfield. Two fantastic competitors and great coaches. Both have their teams ready to go today. It was a matter of execution in the third quarter, and BYU was able to out-execute Air Force. Let's take a look at our DirecTV player of the game. It's the BYU signal call. Uh, had an outstanding day and really was under an awful lot of pressure now 34 touchdown passes this season that's a mountain west conference single season record hung in there made all of the passes that he had to dennis pitt across a couple crucial third down throws max hall clearly a great game and the player of the game for us it certainly looks like byu has bounced back from that midweek loss on the road to a great tcu team a couple of weeks ago 38-24 is the final. Now time for a great Surface Academy tradition. Here at the Air Force Academy, the playing of the alma mater titled third verse. the final home game at Falcon Stadium for 18 Air Force Academy seniors. They go down fighting, scratching, and clawing, but too much BYU. We've got more to come from Colorado Springs. Stick with us. We're back to the Air Force Academy after this. It's the 10th win of the season for 16th ranked BYU. Tom Martin, Trev Alberts in the booth joined on the field by head coach Bronco Mendenhall. Coach, first and foremost, what does this win mean to your team in, in terms of grabbing momentum for the final week of the season coming up? You know, it just is the next win, and this team is, uh, they know how to fight, they know how to scrap, and they know how to get victories, and uh, when you play at Air Force against this football team and having to dig deep like we did, I think it just continues to find the heart of this football team. Hey, Coach, now going in again, of course, uh, huge game on the road at Utah. How important was a game like this on the road? How can this help you in that game next week on the road? You know, I, I think one of the main factors was it just didn't allow our players nor any of our fans to consider anyone else. And the Utah game on any given year is is really just a fantastic environment. But when you play Air Force prior to that, nothing else can enter your mind, which is uh, I think was really helpful to our team. Coach, another fantastic performance from your quarterback, Max Hall, and the supporting cast that he has, the go-to guys that he knows he can depend on. But we have a, a good football team led by a very good quarterback, and when you have a running back like Harvey Unger, when you have receivers like Austin Collin and a tight end like Dennis Pitta, um, you have enough weapons to, to be in or win every game, and in this case, it's been 10 wins this, this season, and Max has a lot to do with it. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Congratulations on the victory. Thank you. BYU goes to 10-1 and on the season. Air Force just its third loss, two of them to ranked teams. They'll finish the season at TCU. BYU has Utah up next. 
for Trev Alberts and our entire CBS College Sports Network crew. I'm Tom Hart saying so long from the Air Force Academy. We're once again the final score is BYU 38, Air Force 24. For the latest scores, news, highlights, and analysis, log on to cbssports.com slash cbscollege. This has been a presentation of CBS College Sports, the pulse of college sports. Thanks for watching from Colorado. Now let's take it to New York.